Alrighty, good afternoon folks and welcome to Spudcast number 337, You Don't Understand Snyder, a Batman v Superman character study. Fantastic. We're going to focus on the character of some characters. I'm assuming Batman because he's in the the uh, thumbnail there, so maybe he's going to talk about Superman too. We don't know yet. I haven't watched the video. <laughs> But this we, just, we don't understand. We, just don't, we don't get the theme, Smud Boy. Yeah. We don't get any of this stuff. We don't understand the genius of Zack Snyder. Yeah, we need to know the the uh, character analysis of Lois of Lois Lane and <laughs> and Martha and, and Martha and, and all these all these side character all these char- all the characters all the characters in Batman. I can't wait to learn something. I can't wait to uh, yeah because I obviously I don't understand. I'm always ready to to learn something new to understand, and obviously about to get a good lesson. And the genius that, we, that none of us caught about Zack Snyder. Well, let's let's make a definition of genius right now. I always like the uh, was it the Bell definition of genius. It's always one percent inspiration, ninety nine percent perspiration. So I would denote anyone who works hard at something and accomplishes a goal as a genius. I don't care if you're making a gingerbread house or you're you're painting a fence. That takes effort. So uh, even by that standard, Zack Snyder is not a genius. He I didn't don't know. His goal. He made a movie. I mean, I guess, I guess his only goal is to make a movie. I, I, I he, he did it. It is technically a film. There's a lot of CGI. Um, there's a lot of long-winded, long scenes that just, I don't know why they were so big and slow. He, he should have just this did The Dark Knight. He shouldn't have just gotten inspiration from The Dark Knight. He should have just... He should have just done the guard because Frank Miller's a genius. Well, Frank Miller is a genius of, of, of writing and everything. It's really good. The Dark Knight Returns is I, really good. I seem to recall one of the cons when Zach was sort of pitching the idea. They got, I can't remember the guy. Was it the guy who played uh, the Martian Manhunter, I think, in the original Smallville? And he said the line where Batman tells Superman that he beat him. Out of all the years you'll be living, Know this, I'm the I'm the one man who beat you, and then he just collapses. That's the that's the yeah. whole scene. That's and, the end of it. And that that got everyone hyped because oh my god, I know that line. That's a very famous line. And that was like you know four years or five years before the movie came out or whatever. And we all thought, oh, he's going to do Frank Miller, and then he didn't. <laughs> You're like, oh, and he, he should have, but he didn't because Zack Snyder is really he's he's at his best when he's copying someone else's work he's, he's at his best when he's doing some a story someone else wrote whether watchman or 300 or something that's when he's at his best it sounds like he's a he's a guy who makes the uh, star trek reboots and the star wars reboots and you know he's he's got a flair for the dramatic it's like i can i can make a great looking film it's like yes you can you can't write for oh yeah shit, I, though. I like the look of his films his films look very good oh yeah 300? the writing on the other hand <laughs> the writing on the other hand yeah three different story uh, we all we all enjoyed the 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 masterpiece of visual um, bombasticness that was three hundred. Uh, lots of great sets, well CGI sets, but they look good. A big empty field of nothing, <laughs> a bit slaughter. <laughs> so uh, no, yeah, three hundred was good. I like I like three hundred. It was a fun. Three hundred was yeah. also uh, it was also written by Frank Miller, and he copied that one directly, and it turned out great. Yeah, well, Frank Miller, uh, he's a unique, unique guy, and uh, he knows what he's doing. Uh, at yeah, least he while, used to. I don't know what he's while doing. While he could write, he could really write. Yeah. Then he went insane. I don't know what happened. To, I guess he lost his mojo. Something, something happened. Yeah, and it's he, funny. I have no idea what happened to him. I don't know why writers in their later years get bad, but some of the writers I love never got bad. So uh, I will say the writing of certain authors I know slowed down, but they were still writing things that were of the same or comparable quality to what they wrote 10 years ago. So, I don't know. Frank Miller is one of those crazy genius guys who are like, whoa, I'm going crazy in my older years for some <laughs> reason. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why he's the... Uh, every once in a while, you get like one of these awesome guys who goes crazy and they can't write anymore. They they uh, just go downhill. I'm not, I don't know why it happens, but Frank Miller has, seems to be one of them, I think, unfortunately. I, I like to call the George R. R. Martin... Um, effect it's like he's we're not sure if he's lazy if he's blind with with uh with money i don't like he's just like what do i do with my life it's like you're a writer you you wake up and you write and then you go back to sleep think about writing and then you wake up again and do the same thing like it's that's it that's your life do it man and he hasn't done it for like a decade and we're just like dude just stop just don't stop writing you obviously (laughs) there's something wrong figure it out 
you know, go on a vacation again or whatever. Just retire for now. Yeah, just to have a, a preliminary retirement and say, oh, I hate sitting on my 12th beach. I'm going to come home now and ponder existence and write about it. That's all you got to do. Oh, and plus finish off those books you were said you were going to finish. That's a good idea too. So, yeah. Writers are getting weird these days. I don't know. I think it's the, the COVID thing. I think they just sort of, oh, now I can stay home and write, and they just don't. And you're like, what, what do you mean? It's perfect. It's <laughs> you have nobody, nobody wants to work anymore. I know. It's weird. <laughs> Get to work, man. Come on. Yeah, it feels good. For, it's good for the mind and the body. Yeah, you could you could now don't have to sit in a coffee shop with your laptop if you if you ever did that. Now you could sit on a patio or whatever in your backyard and just do it that. Like whatever makes you comfortable. Go ahead. I think a guy made fun of that, that the writer who writes at Starbucks or whatever. Look, Gary, when I'm writing, I'm writing yeah. a novel. Hey, check with, me out. Uh, writing with a novel. one hand on his on his <laughs> uh, on his lap, with one leg crossed, he's like, "Yeah, I'm writing. Yeah, sure." Like yeah, look that, at me, I'm writing. Like that guy from uh, that James Bond film, he types everything with one hand. What the hell was his name? Uh, is that crazy news conglomerate rich dude? Anyway. Not important. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's just look at this dude's stats. Okay, his name is Colin Sanders or Colin Sanders. Uh, he has 2.4K subs. Uh, the video we're looking at has a little over 12,000 views and came out uh, last week. So this month. So he's doing okay for, uh, for a video that's 25 minutes long, roughly. So this will take some time. And lit dev is prepared. I'm going to have my own little anecdotes here and there. But uh, we should take under two hours unless we uh, pontificate. But hopefully we won't do that. That never happens. Yeah, no, no. So here's Mark in 3D. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Thanks for the huffs. Uh, is this something like Neon Genesis Evangelion? Too deep for you? Um, uh, not quite, but it's in the same vein because the fanboy is strong in Mr. Colin. <laughs> the fanboy is struggling with this one. Yes, it's very, very rambly. So, we may as well get started. All right, 24 minutes and 22 seconds. Here we go. Place to start. A while back, I made my first video essay talking about Batman v Superman and why I believed that the film was, and I quote, a true work of art. Okay, so again, I've said this before, I've said it bef many times. Anyone who uses these big words like true or honest or 100% or uh, love, um, these big generic broad brush strokes of words, <laughs> we've already failed in semantics. We've already failed in argumentation. The true work of art. It's not, it can't just be art. It's got to be, you know, it can't just be a movie. It's got to be a work of art. Then it has to be a true work of art. You're like, okay, dude, can we stop exaggerating? It's like other movies. She's not like other. She's not like other girls. Sh uh, smart. She's, she's, it's not like other movies. Not like other superhero movies. I know. It's I know. A I've, real one. I said this last night about liking and disliking things. Whenever you exaggerate anything, you are changing your perception. You are altering what is actually there. And sometimes you do that because you're in love. You're like, oh, I love my wife, and she's amazing, even though she's not. <laughs> but to you, she is because there's nothing else in your life quite like her. Yada yada yada. People are biased. That's what we're trying to say. So what we try to do, at least what I try to do in criticism, is say, yes, I like this after I've gone through all the rigorous tests and mental fortitude and trials of saying, okay, why is this good? Why is The Princess Bride still watchable and likable? Why, do the lines, why are the lines so memorable? Why are the characters and acting and performances so good? What makes them good? So... This takes a lot of effort, but if you're going to put a 25-minute video about the genius that is Mr. Snyder, you better bring your A game. And if you can't even get the first sentence working, you got to go back to school, unfortunately. Anyway. Now, before I go on, I just want to say that before I made this video, I had around 100 or so subscribers, most of them, of course, being friends and family. I really did not believe that I was going to get... Okay, if you have 100 friends and family, or... Uh, let's see, it's that's pretty good. <laughs> 60, <laughs> 66 friends or sixty. Sorry, sixty-seven. Most of the, because the minimum is sixty-seven. Minimum friends and family. You are, I mean, holy shit. 
<laughs> let's name them, okay, Colin? No, let's not. <laughs> Personal guy, yeah. Jesus, how many how many kids do you own? Like, what did you, what did, you do? What did your family do? Like, <laughs> procreate a, a country or something or a small village in Africa? Uh, anyway. More than a few hundred views on it. But to my surprise, it really blew up. I just want to start off by saying that I am truly appreciative of those of you who took time to watch the video and hear me out. I do, however, understand that I could have communicated what I believed a little better. This whole video essay thing is still pretty new to me, so thank you for being patient enough to give me that grace. I really could not have asked for a better response from you guys, so thank you so, so much. What was Snyder's reasoning for erasing? This is... This is not him, I, or is it him? I have no idea. I think, I think he's commenting on another person's video. Oh, this is someone else's video. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I think he's commenting on someone else's video. Batman's tea. Well, Snyder's thought process when he made this decision, it looks a lot like this. You understand, Snyder? A Batman vs Superman character study. Okay. Why do you say that name? My audacity and yours, my word. What? My audacity. Before I spend the next half hour talking about fictional characters in a superhero movie, I want to address the title of this video. I hope that, after reading it, some of you felt a little attacked, because it is absolutely natural to be insulted after being told that you don't understand He's going to show us a light smut. You, the average DC fan, who has yep, seen all the movies, like. read the... I'm not a DC fan, but okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's what every DC fan looks like, I assume. Yeah. During the pandemic, we just shave the sides of our head and just, you know, whatever. Whatever's on the top, we don't care. Comics, and have passively engaged in the Batman and Superman media that is presented to you. You believe that you harbor some understanding of the characters, so you believe that your position on Snyder's iteration of them must, therefore, be the right one. Thus, you are aggravated when someone tells you that you don't, in fact, understand it. Okay, so he's trying to make an argument from lore, which is a fair attempt. That's what we do when we talk about knowledge of a topic or knowledge of stories you say okay before all that stuff that we could talk about craft and narrative let's say okay what can we just explain everything away with lore and I mean, he could technically bring in examples where batman this directly kills people uh he did that in the, in the beginning i know that for a fact right a little bit like you swing in he'll break some guy's neck on purpose and then he'll, he'll move along but uh this like superman the he has been around for a long long very long time and he has of course evolved over time and of course when you have a new character new story they do tend to evolve they haven't gotten their bearings just yet so and of course this at the time when they when batman and superman were created the superhero genre wasn't entirely defined it was brand new it's kind of evolving out of the pulp genre at that moment and he had superman and then in fact uh Batman came after Superman, and he was supposed to be the darker version of the guy. He's supposed to be like a. They, they came. They got Superman, and they. I forgot who they, who they went to. The creator of Batman. They went to him, and he was a little. He's like a. He was a young guy back then. He was like maybe a teenager, maybe early twenties back then. And they said, "Okay, we need you to make another character that's going to be on par with Superman." And they went the opposite, where Superman's like this gigantic god of a being. They went with Batman, who's just a normal, regular guy. And one of the guys they kind of based Batman off of was the Shadow. And they wanted to keep that kind of violent streak to the character. And so, yeah, he Batman killed a little bit. He, he didn't kill in his first outing, by the way. He killed. He, he didn't kill uh, until maybe the second or third. When he killed like this big, gigantic Chinese henchman. And then he swung in and broke his neck. Uh, so that's kind of where it goes. But ever since then... Uh, he's evolved in the ethos of Batman has become a guy who does not use guns and has the no kill rule. And we've seen this time and time again. It's not only something that just so happens to be in a comic book or so happens to be in a movie. It's something that they've made stories out of because that's what it's become understood. That's what Batman has, has eventually evolved into a guy who doesn't kill and a guy who does not use guns because of course it would, he want, he doesn't want to use the same tool that was used to kill his parents. He doesn't like it. It's it's traumatic for him. So and uh, you get all of these stories like the like the Red Hood versus Batman. That's done. That was there because the Red Hood was angry at Batman for not killing the Joker for his sake. Like he said, "Why didn't you? This the Joker killed me, Batman. Why didn't you kill the Joker? I could I could I thought at at any point in time that you would have killed the Joker once he did that to me. So there's all kinds of stories evolving from the character that 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 Batman has become. So 
no, it's not the the real Batman is not the Batman that kills. A real Batman, not the one we just been ignoring the whole time. And the real Batman is the one that has you know the consolidated Batman, the one that we kind of understand as Batman, the guy who doesn't kill, the guy who doesn't use guns, the guy who fights bad guys violently, sure, but kind of trying to stays away from going the lethal route because it's been explained that if he does so. He won't be any better than anyone else. He'll be judge, jury, and executioner. He'll be the, uh, and he might not be able to stop himself after that. He might, if it feels you do it once, and suddenly there's no going back. In certain so, cases, yeah, I would say the author can do whatever they like when they create a new iteration with new characters and a new setting. However, because of the popularity and the the various types of stories of Batman being this or that and being a vampire or a flying bat creature and all these other types. It's like, we got to explore why Batman is killing, if he does kill. And we never really go that far. We never get to see that with Zack Snyder's Batman. He's just right. a we grumpy, never just... older Batman. You're just like, so you just kill people now? <laughs> this kills people now. I, it's, it's like with the TLJ's Luke Skywalker. They, all of a sudden, they're just sad and miserable and their their failures apparently. We never see how they got to that point from where they should have been, where we understood where they should be. The optimistic Batman has fallen to this point where he kills people now, and right. like Luke Skywalker, the optimistic Luke Skywalker has fallen to where he just wants to give up on everything now. And you don't get to see that; it's just understood that they're at this place now for no for no adequate reason. And I'm trying to remember my Frank Miller's uh, Dark Knight Returns. He doesn't kill, as far as I know. No, he doesn't kill one single person in that comic book. Yeah. Like he's very violent, though we know that for sure. Oh yeah, he, in fact, he's a. That's part of the, the idea of Dark Knight Returns that he kind of breaks a little bit, and that's you get to see that with the, the outcome of the Joker. He's not the sharp, noble Batman he used to be. He's a little bit darker uh, and a little less noble, but he's still noble, and he still has the idea of not to kill. Right, and that's why I want, I wanted rather in the story for that realization to come true that the character explains or Alfred explains or someone explains like, why is he at this way? Because we have, to me, the best rendition of his parents' death in Batman v Superman. It's so beautiful and touching. And like that, that goes, oh my God, that's, this is so dramatic. This should be the, the impetus for everything Batman does. And he'll never want to hurt people to the point of death like that. And then he just, brands people which is like a death sentence essentially for jail time and you get killed because you were you were captured by the bat and a bunch of prisoners are going to hate you for that so all this stuff is is happening in the world whether he directly kills them or or indirectly it's like oh geez this is this is a horrible place to live and how is how is murder making it bad how is batman any better than a, than a, a thug murdering people it's it's strange so we need we needed that addressed and we never got it. That's that's the only major problem I would say. If you want Batman to kill, just explain why. And exactly uh, and, and how yeah, we, we got we, there. Because we can't get hints as to why. Because we got to see like oh Robin died. It's yeah, like, how many people say that way, Alfred. No, yeah, that would be that would be a start. Like we just saw the the outfit and the the the, the spray paint. We're like, oh, okay, was that the reason? We just we just look at it. It's like, can you tell us something about that? Because we can argue all about Bronze Age comics and the Silver Age of when Batman did in fact kill people, and you're like, yes, that's fine, but that happened a long time ago by other writers for other reasons. And he's evolved since then. It's been a yeah, it's been a while. So please, you know, focus on the now and tell us your story and why it works that way. Anyway, also uh, uh, the other thing about this is that Zack Snyder just tells us that he's mad and sad and gloomy and everything. Oh, here's the here's Robin's outfit. Here's uh, this, uh, I'm going to stay that way, Alfred, that sort of thing. Uh, what we don't get to see is any of that. We don't get to see any of that. We don't get to see how he fell, how he went to, like, a, went from the, a bright, noble, optimistic Batman to what he is now. And uh, you're, just, you're kind of just counting on us to know the history of Batman without showing us the history. So while, while, while we might kind of intellectually understand why he might be angry, we're not emotionally there. We're not emotionally behind why Batman is killing these people and uh, this is why, so we don't understand. We don't understand, at least in this version, we don't understand why his Batman is. Uh, I mean, we understand intellectually, but we don't, we're not there supporting him or empathizing with him emotionally. Like, I think Zack Snyder wanted us to. Like, we need to be understood, or he needs to be understood by the audience uh, for this to be this big dramatic battle. But 
he's not. It's just, oh, he's sad. And because I guess Robin died. I don't know how, I guess because the Joker killed him. I don't know. We don't get to see it happening. And, and and we don't get the other side of it where we, how much did he actually care about Robin? We don't know. We don't actually get to see Robin or how much you care about him. In the Dark Knight Returns, we get to see everything. And we get to, like, no matter how angry he got, no matter how uh, dark he got, Frank Miller's Batman in Dark Knight Returns, like he gets the, the sidekick in Carrie Kelly. And we can see how much he cares about her. He doesn't treat her as like a utensil or object or whatever. It's not like, oh, she's dead. Who cares? Yeah, he calls her soldier. Good soldier. Good soldier. But he cares about her. He 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 hugs her. He he um he gives an example of compassion to her. He has compassion in that movie, or compassion in that book. He does that. Uh, so we we're emotionally there. If Car- when Carrie Kelly gets in trouble or if people start threatening her, we're emotionally there with him. If if Carrie Kelly gets hurt or killed, hypothetically speaking, we would be right there with Batman, wanting him to you know deliver the final blows to whoever did it. And uh, we're right there with Batman and Superman, both on the emotional level, in the at the end because we see it's not like just Superman just comes out of nowhere and fights him. It, we can see what Superman has to deal with every day. We can see little snippets of him uh, interjecting himself in global politics and things. And then on the, on the other hand, we of course it's Batman's journey, so we get to see his journey as well, and we get to see both of their journeys. We get to see both of their perspectives and both of their philosophies, and then they fight. It's not just I think it'd be cool if you fight. Go go fight him because man versus God or something. Okay, and that's it. That's that's it's really really shallow, shallow in Batman versus Superman. Like really really shallow. All right, here is Great Scott. Thank you for the five. Speaking of, Under the Red Hood would have made for a much better Batman movie to introduce Batfleck, then move on to Batman v Superman, Batman Returns. That's well. There's plenty of great stories that have Batman work with his compatriots and how they turn against him and how then why that works. That would have been great. I would have loved to have seen a live action uh, Red Hood uh, Batfleck. I think that'd be pretty cool because we, we had a great one animated and if they can get anywhere close to that, which they usually don't, <laughs> it would have been cool. So He's about 50% of the greatness of the comic book at least or at, at most maybe. I like the attempt. I really would like to have seen that. That would have been a, f- a fantastic series of, maybe not like we saw like Bad Blood and all these other more obscure stories where it's like there's too many characters and you got Batwoman. And, or, Killing Joke was... Ah, uh, it was okay. It's watchable, I guess. But then he had to add in the Batgirl stuff, and people say, "Oh, it needs to be longer." No, it doesn't need to be longer. The story didn't need to be longer in the comic book. Just, just make it. Just make the story. Yeah. Just give us the story. It's fine. I think the animated version was pretty freaking decent. So that was great. All right, let's keep going. Good. Now imagine growing up loving comics, loving Batman and Superman movies and TV shows adoring the characters and relating to them in a way that you feel is personal. Then imagine being told to write and direct a film about them. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into adapting these characters who you've known all your life into a film that you've put your heart, soul, mind, and body into. You speak to THE Christopher Nolan, the genius behind The Dark Knight, about your ideas of what to do with the characters and the film, who ultimately approves it and encourages you to do it the way you want to. Then imagine releasing it and being told how stupid and idiotic you are for failing to understand basic fundamentals of those characters. Zack Snyder does not understand Batman or Superman has become arguably the most common response from critics to Snyder's iteration of these characters. In my last video, I did not spend as much time talking about the characters as I probably should have. My goal in this video is to convince at least some of you that these are well-written characters and that Snyder, while he- Okay, so we didn't address the actual criticism as to why people think this way and we sort of alluded to it saying that because Batman is such a well-known character, one of the most famous characters in storytelling, really, in today's age at least, there's so much of a mystique and an image everyone has in their minds already. There's comic books, obviously. There's the anim- various animated series. We have multiple movies, multiple video games, all kinds of genres. And it's like, okay, Batman doesn't kill. Batman has a bunch of friends. He helps them out. He's kind of moody. He's always beating himself up over the death of his parents, and he's obsessed with protecting Gotham. Like, that's sort of the given. Right. There's a few other details, like he has a Batmobile and this and that and technology, but it comes down to that is his moral compass. So what you have to do, once you take a super popular character in the, in the what's the word? The, the Not the gestalt, the cultural milieu of, of knowledge, and say, okay, 
I'm going to try my, it's like Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to take my attempt at writing Sherlock. I'm going to give him uh, guns, but he doesn't kill people, even though he might have to. He's going to be really good. Right. At, yeah, like, like do something, do a spin on Sherlock Holmes, but you still got to explain if he's different, how, especially about one of his core beliefs, you got to tell us how he got there. And it doesn't, we don't have to like that, but you still have to make it, have it make sense within the story. And once you do that, you're free to do what you like. It's the same with science fiction. You write up a, a, a weapon or a technology. It's like, okay, now we understand why we have people that can throw people across, across the room like the Force or or in Mass Effect with, with biotics. Yeah, but if you get like a Sherlock Holmes who's like really over-sexualized and everything, where he just goes after all these women and he's, he's always worried about right. you know the, getting laid the next day or whatever, that's not Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, wait, it's a different guy. You can you can write a Sherlock Holmes who's a womanizer, but you have to you have to get there. You have to you have to make the jump from guy who's a pure brain to guy who's a pure brain with sexual urges. You're like, oh, okay, a strong sexual drive. Yeah, like, it, the, the only way I could I could see that ever happening is if Sherlock Holmes is in a a state like he's in a uh, a, a, a mystery or a, on a case where he has to pretend to be one of those guys. Right. He's, he's playing a part. And then I could see him doing that. So Otherwise, no. That would be <laughs> I, I can't. that would be great because we actually saw that with the BBC where he pl- he played around with that girl's feelings. Um, I can't remember her name to to engage with her or, or, or offer an engagement ring. He used her in order to. Uh, I don't know why he used. I forgot why he did it, but it was oh. for a reason for yeah. to get closer to the case. He wanted to. He wanted to go see her at her work, and she wanted to surprise her with a ring. And that's why he was going to see her to get into the building so he could snoop around or whatever. And uh, so, he, but before that, he was building up this relationship with her, all acting, all just to protect her. So she, she yeah, was. They even slept in separate rooms too. Like he, doesn't, he, he still didn't want to have sex with her. <laughs> but see, that's a great way of setting stuff up because he's a genius. He's a brain and he'll act things out so that he can do the, the ultimate goal, which is to protect someone. And exactly. you can do that with super, you can do that with all kinds of characters and yet still do your own thing. So it's great stuff. <sighs> anyway, Jake the Surgeon. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Uh, Superman is big, sad man, Zook Snooder. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Superman is sad in this one. And he's sad and he's, just, he's all miserable and <laughs> frowny. And he hates America probably. I don't know. <laughs> America bad. Cause, Everyone just hates America. Because I came from America and I love my mom and dad who are American and they taught me to question everything. You're like, okay, <laughs> kill or save kids? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Hard question. All right. He may not be the best filmmaker of all time. Is actually a pretty good one. My hope for you is not that you grow to love this movie or these characters the same way I do, because at the end of the day, we're all going to have differing personal preferences. Instead, I hope that I. Okay, so he said filmmaker, not writer. And I would argue, yeah, he's he's a fine filmmaker. I don't really care about that. I do like I do like the style of his movies. It's very distinct. He has his, for for all of this credit, you know, the credit where credit is due. Zack Snyder does have his voice in terms of filmmaking. Yeah, he just can't make a good story that it's well. It's the same <laughs> argument with J.J. Abrams. Uh, he has a he has a flair for the dramatic. He knows how to cut shots and spin around and do all he kinds of spin around all kinds of camera angles. Yeah, he's fantastic looking stuff, but. Writing? Zack Snyder is better than J.J. Abrams. I put him a category higher than you Yeah. <laughs> in terms of filmmaking. In terms of filmmaking. Yeah. Not story writing. Filmmaking. Yeah. We don't, we don't <laughs> want to consider them for, for, for writing, period. Okay? We just, like, just don't get them near a pad and pencil. Just don't even <laughs> think about it. Can communicate an idea in a way that will make you at least see it from a different light and hopefully appreciate it for what it is. What okay. is it? Convince me. Seduce me with your wares. Scarecrows? Hugging down scarecrows. Does it mean this strong? topic regarding Snyder's characters is far from outdated. This video by The Closer Look just came out two days ago as I began to write this, which is actually what made me want to do this essay before I did anything about Snyder's Zach Batman Snyder's sucks. He's right about that, though. In the video, they talk about how Batman's integrity seems compromised in BVS. <laughs> seems? And they propose okay. that. Well, here, I'll just let you watch it. What was Snyder? Seems no, it is compromised. It's the whole idea that Zack Snyder wanted to put off that uh, his 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 integrity is compromised you see, horribly. If if Batman wanted to kill people, he would just use guns. See, he would, yeah, he could. He's a he's a, he's he's a guy who trained for like every mass across the world. If he wanted to kill people, there'd be this 
bodies laid in the streets. He'd be better than the Punisher at this stuff. Yeah, he'd be a ninja with like stealth bullets, so it would, no one could see him coming. Pretty much. But in instead, fact, he uses bullets in uh, Dark Knight Returns, but they're rubber. Yeah, but instead, he gets to the nitty gritty and like gets his arm cut up and bloody and beat it up. And it's like, dude, if you're gonna kill guys, just freaking be efficient about it. <laughs> why? Why go through all this rigmarole? It's weird. You know, when we when we play uh, Arkham City or Arkham Knight or any of those Arkham games, it's like a playing a, a pinball match. Like you're just bouncing around everyone. <laughs> Batman's an acrobat. It's really cool. Obviously, it he's, is really cool. He's really buff and big. He's like, okay, that's a different kind of Batman. That's Batman. And that's Batman. That's uh, they did a pretty good job in at least the first one. Yeah. So that felt kind of like what Zach was doing in a, in a realistic setting. But you can go dark with Batman. Dar- Darkness. When Batman goes dark, yeah, you could definitely. He's like here to do it with, uh, but usually, it's because the villains make it. Is the villains take it there? Where the villains go dark, the villains have do have a uh, more extreme plans. Right. It's not because Batman suddenly starts killing people. It's usually because villains start to become. That's what happens in Dark Knight Returns, by the way. That Batman is even he's retired, but the darkness comes from how dark Gotham has got in terms of its criminal activity. Where you have like a, a nuns being slaughtered and children being killed and kidnapped and people being raped on a nightly basis, it, it, they, all that is input in the in Gotham, and then that's what forces Bruce Wayne to come out of retirement and become the Batman again. Okay, so let's see. Here. So this is someone else's video. Just that this is the the reason why he's doing what he's doing. I think this is a closer look. Right. Oh wait, here's Jake the surgeon again. My cat has better taste than this guy. And she licks her butt. Oh. <laughs> thank, thank, I believe it. Thank you, Jake. Snyder's reasoning erasing Batman's integrity. Well, Snyder's thought process when he made this decision, it looked a lot like this. You know, I like movies with a dark, grim tone. I should make my superhero movies with a dark, grim tone. That's it, yeah. And what could be more grim than killing people? Therefore, all of my superheroes need to be killers. Oh my god. I know he's saying this is a joke, but I am i wouldn't be surprised if it's actually, this is actually Zack Snyder's thought process. I like grim stories, and I should make them kill people. That's pretty grim. As far as I think that Zack Snyder thought about these movies. Th- this is kind of weird because it, it, the results end up being true, but we look at the the genres where things are dark and there's grim dark, there's noir, there's uh, various kinds of political intrigue where it's not the focus, but the end result is killing after lots of rigmarole and and subterfuge. So if he was going to do a really smart, intelligent Batman that kills, he could have gone that route. He could have gone dark and gritty and mysterious. Instead, he went explosions, action, uh, things being torn apart and blood and guts. You're like, okay, dude, I I don't think that's Batman. I, I've never seen that, even in the comics where he does kill people or he leaves them to die. It's just sort of like, okay, the fight's over. It was exhausting. I'm, I hate this. I'm leaving because even Batman has limits. <laughs> so there's there's lots oh, yeah. of scenes. I think he does kill Thanos. Well, or not Thanos. He kills, uh, the hell's the other guy? Uh, Darkseid. Dark Dark side, yeah. I, I think he kills him with, a, with some kind of magical bullet or some bullshit. But, you know, it's dark side. Once you get to dark side, it doesn't really matter who you are. If you could stop dark side, you'd do it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, because th- there's no hope. He's evil incarnate. So he's, he's basically yeah. the devil of, of the hell of DC Universe. Yeah, it's like, okay, it doesn't really matter if Batman has a, a, an urge to protect a city. It's like, this guy is going to destroy existence. It's like, you may as well just get rid of him if you can. So, anyway. God, that I'm a genius. That's it. Why would you bother to make these parody and insanely idiotic and insulting arguments about the film? Oh my God. Why are you making a joke and dumb and doing a dumb <laughs> job at it? It's a joke. It's supposed to be dumb. What are you talking about? And, and it's funny because it, we could feel as if you, it's true. <laughs> this is exactly his mentality going into the making of this movie. Yeah. Because that's what we got in the movie. If someone parodied me and, and used my voice and I would... T- be talking about critical analysis and I wouldn't start saying, well, that's a dumb take of my voice. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> like that that'd be kind of... That would be silly. <laughs> that would be kind of childish for me. Like, what's the point? What's he trying to make? 
what is he trying to say? He's making a joke about Zach and his potential mental process. That's all he's doing. Don't take it personal, okay? themselves. Have your own opinions. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But coming up with these horribly constructed straw man arguments. It's not a straw man. He's making a joke. I don't think that was even an argument. That was just kind of his opinion expressed via joke. <laughs> That's kind of all it was. See, this is the problem we have with a lot of YouTubers. They, they don't know the meaning of words or they have their own definition of words and they use them expecting this is a, an argument or a, a point of reference to, to make sense of. You're just like, dude, are you I had some whiskey? Yeah, are you in like grade <laughs> nine? Like what what did you just enter like high school? Like what happened? Did you ever write an essay? Did someone ever correct your grammar and logic? Well, actually, yes, yeah, provable. The people actually did correct his, his his first essay. It was on e but it was on EFAP. Oh. <laughs> that's why. Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably why. Yeah. For no to humiliate and belittle the person who you think is wrong is ridiculous and infantile. I mean, it's not the best thing to do at all times, but it's something that's uh, valid if you, because that's what it seems like it's doing. It's not like he's, he's taking completely out of nowhere. This this take is coming completely out of nowhere, like some people do. This is actually something you would get. It's actually something you would you would see. Yeah. So uh, in the movie, is this this if you watch the movie and you know who Batman is and you you have a you're a fan of Batman and then you see Zack Snyder's Batman, that's something you can kind of see being the uh, a joking conclusion of what, what Zack Snyder was going with yeah. in the thinking process. So guys, next time someone you like, uh, you hear someone make a joke about him, you don't call him ridiculous and infantile unless it is in fact ridiculous and infantile, like a he's acting <laughs> out a, re, a retarded response to, like he's playing a caricature or something. Like that would be that would be goofy, like a, like a comedian would do. Oh but yeah. This is just a dude giving his opinion of what how Zack got from A to B. And it's funny because he's it's it seems to be correct. Uh, I can see that being the actual case. That's why it's so hilarious. What's, what's the most, also, yeah? What's the most uh, grim dark comic? I could, Frank Miller. Oh, let's read Frank, Frank Miller. Miller. Let's read Batman. his bat. Yeah, <laughs> great. I'll do that. Thank, thanks, Zach. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll just I was I can I make it dark and gritty. How do I do that? Oh, I'm making Batman kill people <laughs> because uh, that's the to totally what he does in the Dark Knight Returns. No, it's 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 actually I, not. I want him to explain the the mental process of Batman deciding not to kill Superman. I want that. I want him to explain that in any intel intelligible, wise, sapient manner. Give me an answer to that because it's the dumbest thing in the entire film that I just, you can't justify. You know what? Even in The Dark Knight Returns, Superman was still optimistic. He, he was like a... So yeah, when yeah. Bruce Wayne was beating him up and smashing his face in after he, gave him the, after he poisoned him with kryptonite, uh, Superman was like, Bruce, your heart, stop. Stop, Bruce, stop. And then Bruce Wayne kind of collapses dead, supposedly, from whatever, you know, his heart being, uh, you right. know, having an attack or something. And then he carries Bruce, and he's all sad, and everyone comes in to take Bruce away. He goes, stay away from him. He, after everything that happened, after getting, after the uh, the conflict that arose, after right. Bruce Wayne went kind of crazy, after coming back as Batman, after being poisoned by Batman, after being having his face smashed in, electrocuted, and beat up by Batman. All, all Clark Kent could think of was Bruce's well-being and that he didn't want his best friend to die. Even Frank Miller, who is a Batman fan, a crazy Batman fan, and doesn't really like Superman so much, even Frank Miller, being a, a talented artist at the time, a talented writer at the time, knew for a fact that he'd, he had to write Superman honestly. Yeah, he preferred Superman a little bit, but it wasn't to an extent where it seemed uncharacteristic. It was, we can kind of see where it, come, where it came from, and Superman even said it, where it's like, why, why you, Batman, I think, mentions, why did you become a, 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 a lackey for the government? And then Superman's like, well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, he saw himself as an outsider at that point. It's their world. Uh, it's, the, they have the right to do with it what they want. I'm here to guide them along the way. That's kind of why he became a, a, a yes man for the government. And, uh, of course, that, that makes him evil or makes him bad guy in, in that perspective. And that he makes him the antagonist, I could say. But, uh, Superman was still written as Superman. He was still written by Frank Miller as Superman, the guy who cares for everyone else, the guy who shrugs off blows against himself and cares and puts other people before himself at all times. Uh, he's, he was still that way. Zack Snyder was like, oh, he's just sad now. And he hates humanity. And he just, and Lois Lane goes away. He just leaves Earth. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> that's, 
that's a character that's not Superman. They're, they're felt as if there was a, a certain relationship even at that point when they realize they have to go get after each other and that Batman's not going to kill Bruce. He's going to try to bring him to death and he does very closely with the radiation <laughs> and a bunch of other things. But he knows that he, he's, he's not going to go all the way. I, th- right, I get that right. feeling. And Batman knows that too. So he's just going through the motions. And even then, Bat, uh, Superman's like, your heart, your heart. And that's when that's the whole plan is, is to get him to believe that it's if it's believable to Superman, it's believable to everyone. That, oh yeah, that Batman's dead, so. and, and that's why the regular Batman is so good. It's so good. It's not, it's not black and white. It's more complex than that. And Frank Miller, being again the uh, talented writer at the time, uh, who knew how to write things, wrote Superman mostly honestly. I mean, it's we could see why Superman would take the, the stance that he does. And when it, go, it comes down to Zack Snyder's Batman versus Superman, uh, people we mock the idea of Martha. Why do you say that name? And then they become best friends. The reason why that's so funny is not just because they have their mom with the same name. Because we could see why, you know, Zack Snyder wrote, wrote it in there. And what makes it funny is their circumstance. It, they don't they don't come to terms or make peace over agreeing philosophies or coming to understand one another or anything like that. It, they just come to terms because their moms have the same name. That's that's it. So it's not like uh, they they before were, you know, in the, in the usual continuity Right. Where Superman and Batman have differing opinions on things, different uh, philosophies on crime fighting, but they're united on the idea of justice. Where at the end of the day, even though they have conflicting ideals, they can agree that bad guys must be stopped, and they be, they're actually best friends, more or less. Uh, so it's when Batman and Superman are fighting each other, and then Superman's like, "Save Martha," and then Batman's like, "Hey, why'd you say that name?" Uh, it's hilarious because that the entire the, the entire welding material used to quell their movie long conflict, their rivalry, is the fact that the mom has the same the same first name. That's that's it. That's the entirety of why they stop fighting. <laughs> instead instead of uh, them uh, having a what they instead of having an anime thing where they they kind of talk and philosophize as they fight. And well, th- no, they don't, they don't, the Zack doesn't do that. There's a good opportunity where <laughs> you can have S- Superman fight Batman and then Superman have give his philosophy and then Su- Batman use the kryptonite stuff and then uh, when he's being a B- Superman, he gives his philosophy. He does a little bit, but it's not meaningful. Um, so it doesn't boil down to they, we understand each other now. It boils down to, oh, your mom has the same first name. That's what makes it hilarious. Yeah, the reason Bat- or Batman wants to fight Superman is because he's a threat. He considers him a threat. And the reason why Superman fights Batman is because he <laughs> can't talk to him. Yeah, exactly. He can't explain things. He's so dumb and angry or whatever, <laughs> he can't talk to the guy who's just a man in an armored suit. Like, why would you be scared of that? To the point where he's, he, debil- he gets debilitated where he just screams out his mother's maiden or first name. You're just like, what? what? Why could he say that like 10 minutes ago? <laughs> What was stopping him? It's all this bullshit in this film. It's hard to hard to stomach. Anyway, uh, Jake the Surgeon, thank you again for the five. We need to bottle water, a label Snyder Taint Sweat, and sell it to Snyder br- oh, Bots. No. We'll make a fortune. <laughs> you probably would. I mean, if it's, le- if it's legitimate. Oh, God. A certificate of authenticity, yeah. Why does that sound like uh, Stephen Seagal's lightning in a bottle? In a drink? <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot he did have that. He did. Have, he had, what was it? An energy drink or something? Yeah, it didn't last too long. <laughs> oh, that's uh. fantastic. Also, I guess we're just going to ignore the fact that in The Dark Knight Returns, which is the Batman that Snyder's Batman is based on, Frank Miller. Com- I like how he showed the uh, the whole oh Batman kills the movie. Yeah, because you know the bat the movie version of Batman is going to be the definitive version of a comic mm. character. Uh, also, this. The Colin Sanders guy kind of takes me as one of those guys who, uh, one of those like TLJ defender types who are like, oh, you're talking about it, therefore I was good. It doesn't matter if you're talking negative about it, as long as you're talking about it. As long as people still talk about it, it's it, that means it was a good piece of art. So he didn't take the EFAP thing as you know a, a symbol that his piece was bad. It was more like, oh, good, people are talking about it. That means it was good. Yeah, it doesn't just matter. Like to me. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter how hard we criticize. It doesn't matter how many comments we we put putting their arguments to, to rest. It's like, nope, I'm going to keep saying the same shit. You're like, okay. <laughs> Happens on a weekly basis here on this podcast, guys. So don't worry about it. 
comic book that, that I reference, you know, he kills all the time, right? The Dark Knight Returns, the, the book where Batman takes the gun, breaks it over his face. <laughs> he gets that one. The weapons of cowards. And is also the movie that this guy puts behind him while he says all this. Batman shoots a man dead, plain as day. Nope, and she doesn't. In this little scene that was also in BVS, Batman shoots, with a gun, a criminal who took a hostage. He's Even not dead. Snyder's Batman didn't do that. Yeah, Snyder's Batman didn't shoot a ho shoot a guy with, who was holding a hostage. He was shooting a guy who was standing behind Superman's mother. And then shot his backpack full of explosion juice. And then barely got it out alive. Much better. <laughs> also, uh, I read that comic book. That that scene, it is not definitive that he shoots the guy. There's no bullet holes, nothing. It just seems like the guy is surprised, maybe, and just, maybe he maybe he shot the guy in a non-lethal way. Because later on, uh, there's a part where he kills, where he uh, loses his control, and he snaps the Joker's neck. He doesn't kill the Joker. He snaps the Joker's neck. And the Joker says, uh, I'm so disappointed that you couldn't finish the job. And the Joker kills himself. And after that, there's a news broadcast where the news people say, OK, now that the Joker is dead, we found the Joker dead. We assume that the Batman killed him. So now the charge of murder has been added to the long list of crimes that we're going after the Batman for. Now he's known for murder. So uh, they knew that Batman took down all those guys. And they, they knew that. Because the Batman was going around taking down cr criminals at that point. So if I, if Batman had killed that guy at that point, then uh, they would have added on murder already. It would have said something like, uh, I don't know, another murder on Batman's on Batman's list of, of, of uh, crimes. But they didn't. Only after they think he killed the Joker did they add the, the charge of murder. The, uh, the crime of murder on his rap sheet. So no, he didn't kill that guy. Not, not according to the writing. Canonically, he didn't. And we didn't see him die. We didn't see him kill that guy. We just saw him shoot the gun, and the guy drops the kid. I'm trying to go through the uh, the Google search of a uh, list of actual deaths that, that Batman has caused throughout the years, or the decades, rather. And that one didn't pop up yet. Let me just see if I can find that. Anyway, we can keep going. Check <laughs> It is also heavily implied that Batman kills the Joker in this graphic novel. See, there it is. And he, and he gets up on his high horse about, oh, you didn't read the graphic novel. There's so much nuance there. And then he gets this wrong. It's not heavily implied anything. Batman snaps the Joker's neck, and then it tells you that the Joker kills himself to finish off the job. He even says so there that you couldn't, you didn't have the nerve. He was disappointed that he didn't have the nerve to finish him off. Uh, the, the reason why this, this scene is so powerful, in the, according to the, the narrative here, is because at this is the point where Joker kind of wins a little bit and gets Batman to lose control. He says that, like, I did it. I made you lose control. And so Batman doesn't kill him, but he snaps Joker's neck, which is extreme for Batman's tactics. Even even for this Batman. The guy who uses rubber bullets to knock everyone out so they, they don't they don't, they don't die. Uh so that's 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 a point. This this the section, by the way, of the novel is called The Dark Knight Falls. Because this is where he starts losing control. He starts um, getting more extreme. He starts getting wounded. And he's getting hounded by the police. It, it's like the lowest point at right. his low point. So he's, he loses control. He does not kill the Joker, though. And there's no implications or anything. It, he, it's, the story revolves, is centered around him not actually killing the Joker, but getting to the point where he almost crossed that line. That's the important part. And then the Joker's like, nah, nah, nah I can't believe you, you didn't have the nerve to do it. And he kills himself. Just so that uh, the police will go after him and think that the uh, that Batman killed him. I just did a search, uh, CBR.com. There's an uh, article about that. And they actually reference the Dark Knight Falls. We see that the police now add murder to the charges against Batman once they find the Joker's body. Batman doesn't kill right. anyone in the remainder of the issue. So yes, as Dan suggested when he wrote to me, Batman doesn't actually kill anyone in the Dark Knight Returns. So, Not one single person. Not one single person. Right. So when Zack Snyder says, oh, he kills all the time in this comic book, it's, I don't know what comic book you read, yeah. but it wasn't this one. So this is, um, okay, so he got the facts wrong, and this is where we get the bias of belief, meaning uh, not, not sub subjugation bias, there's a predisposition bias maybe where you think a thing and you don't bother to research it hard enough. 
you just find enough information to support your claim. So someone said it, right. therefore it's okay. So some, someone else said it's okay, uh, as opposed to actually going to the primary source and, uh, you know, re- like here, here's the actual picture. Did, where did he kill the, the Joker? Where does it happen? Nowhere. He yeah. snaps the Joker's neck, but doesn't that the snapping of the neck does not kill him. It kind of paralyzes him, of course, but it doesn't kill him. Yeah. The Joker kills himself. That happened in uh, a few episodes of, uh, of Batman where in the comic books where he snaps uh, KGB, what's his name? One of those, those guys. He has it twice, actually, throughout the comics where he snaps the guy's neck. He's still alive, but he doesn't provide aid. He doesn't call anyone. He just leaves him there to die. <laughs> but... <laughs> But it's not it's not it's not shown whether he survives or not. So KG Beast, there it is. So uh it happens twice. Anyway. Well as well. The problem with this video is that it sets up a ridiculously easy argument to knock down. They establish a few things. One, okay. Zack Snyder made Batman kill strictly for tone. Two, yes. there is absolutely no iteration of Batman with compromised integrity. That's not what? No, Carmen. Co- there's, there's, there's a few of them, I think. But yeah, I think Zack Snyder just made Batman kill a tricky for tone because all he needs was like this dark fallen Batman, which is not unique to the Snyder. It's not the first time you see a dark fallen Batman. But the thing is, usually when when Batman falls in that nature, he usually keeps his morals intact. Is just when we talk about falling, he kind of becomes he falls to his flaw, which is that he becomes so obsessed because uh, I think Batman's flaw is obsession. He becomes so obsessed. With fighting in crime or taking taking down a particular criminal, he pushes everyone out, he pushes everyone away. He pushes Alfred away. He can push out uh, his his allies away. All that stuff. That's that's how Batman falls. Where he comes, he becomes more violent, more uh, extreme in his methods, and he pushes away all of his uh, everyone everyone else that can keep him on the right track, that can bring him back to morality, bring him back to sanity. That's when he pushes away everyone away. So that's that's compromised Batman, where he's. He becomes so violent and so extreme that uh, even like the people around him start to questioning his sanity and his integrity and everything. But he still usually doesn't kill as far as I've seen. Right. The, the farthest we get, and I'm not even sure what he does in an alternate reality of the Justice Lords where the Flash dies and he starts uh, helping Superman and Wonder Woman and everyone else take over the planet and make peace for everyone. I'm not sure who he kills. I just know his methods are extreme to the point where Superman kills President Luther, I think. And yes. a bunch of other things start happening. So this is an alternate version of Batman, of course. Right, right. So they, I think you might get that version of Batman also in Kingdom Come. I can't remember. But I know he becomes like a fascist t- sort of guy almost, where he has he, all these bots going around. He is, he, yeah, he, he can't go out into the field anymore, so he has to use his robots. But I don't think he kills anyone. I'd have to check that out. I really don't, I don't think, think so. I don't remember him killing anybody. But yeah, I think Zack Snyder made Batman kill Strictly for Tone because you couldn't have the Batman that he wants to have in the movie without him killing anybody. So yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of iterations of Batman compromising. If the guy that he's referring to said that, that's wrong, but that's kind of a silly thing for him to say, even if he would consider saying that. I don't think he did. Because Batman has a flaw in that's obsession. He's, he becomes, sometimes becomes so obsessed and focused that... He pushes everyone else out of his life, and he becomes more and more violent because he's yeah. the, Batman is the guy who walks into the abyss. Like the Gotham is the abyss, and he's the guy who the the Dark Knight who goes in there to tackle all the monsters. And uh, sometimes the abyss rubs off on him. Sometimes he gets corrupted. It's a constant struggle that Batman has to deal with. I always see it as a as a form of control because Batman was so traumatized by the death of his family, he had to then say, "Okay, I'm going to control everything in my life." And I'm going to use it to bring order to this crazy world that I live in now, which happens to be Gotham City, as opposed to just vacationing in Paris forever. So he wants to take it upon himself to right the wrong that happened to him. And it's all about control. And he has to maintain this level of physique and intelligence and have a dragnet and all these other things that he uses to monitor uh, Gotham and make sure the crime is, is... it's not preventative crime. It's just sort of as a, as happening crime, and he's ma- he manages to prevent stuff to uh, from you know, people getting mugged or this like little things like that. That's the traditional sense of Batman. So in the comics and the, uh, the animated series, it's much more complicated. So ah, compromise integrity. All right, let's see where he's going with this. And three. 
those who defend it attempt to justify Batman's killing, as does the film itself. Now, as far as the first and last point, I'll be covering that stuff later in the video, so just keep that in mind. But I want to fixate on the second point for now. So let's ask the obvious question. Is there an iteration of Batman whose integrity is compromised? Now I could dig deep into all the obscure iterations of Batman that kill to prove my point, but instead I'm going to talk about the most relevant version. Batman from The Dark Knight Returns. Okay. Many right, people go. appeal to this graphic novel as a reason why Snyder missed the mark with his interpretation. But I'm convinced yes, that these guys either only watched the cartoon adaptation of the book, which sacrifices a lot of the themes, dialogue, subtext, and story beats for simplicity and marketability, or they looked up random panels on Google Images and thought that... <laughs> <laughs> the guy's not a real fan. He never read the comic. He never understood the comic. It's like, okay. All right. My guy, let's go. That would be enough for their argument, but it really doesn't sound like they read the book at all. I, See, I told you. I'm not <laughs> I, trying to sound snobby. I promise that I am not trying to gatekeep the dark. <laughs> I told you that uh, he gets on his high horse about, oh, you guys didn't read the actual comic. You just saw the movie. Well, and uh, and then he goes, obviously, he makes these two assertions that where he obviously didn't read the comic book. We say this all the time. It's like we, we get to a point in the video where like, okay, dude. We know you're wrong. We have the page number and the panel number to prove you're wrong. What did you read? And how did you interpret it as such? Because it doesn't make any sense. Anyway. Dark Knight Returns. I just can't believe that somebody could oh, read this I just can't book believe. You guys are all just so stupid. The interpretation they have. It would be the equivalent of engaging in a conversation with someone about Jurassic Park and listening <laughs> to them tell you how much they love how the film portrays scientific discovery in a positive light, and how the film pushes the idea that we as a society should continually push the bounds of scientific discovery because of how beneficial it can be for life. You of course respond by asking what the heck they're talking about, and they show you this scene. Sure, okay, so the argument here is that he's he's choosing that we're choosing and picking and choosing, we're cherry picking the scenes so that oh you're Zach Snyder was wrong about yeah. that. Well uh, th this is weird because uh you could make the argument for someone who's a fan of paleontology or science or whatever and saying, Well look, it's a it's a good premise, but the story has to be about this this paradise gone wrong and what happens as a result. But in reality, those like the the worst can happen doesn't always happen. This could be a boundary of science we've yet to cross, and we should consider it or whatever. So, you can get a lot out of a film and how it inspires your 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 life. But yeah, the film is not about that. We get it. This is one part of the film. This is one element. This is what people do when they say, "Well, this is clearly a story about Marxism," because here's the, the oh yeah yeah the control of <laughs> of the. Well, the means of production. It's like, but uh, like, Robin Hood was a libertarian. Robin Hood was a, was a communist. Robin Hood was a capitalist. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, wait a second. What are you What are you talking about? It's not. Maybe happened. he was none of those. Maybe it was just a story about a guy fighting against tyranny. What about that? How about that? Yeah, it's not a. It's not that complicated. It's not really all there is to it. And you could argue that element exists, and then you can make a, an essay about it. That's great, and you'll be right because that little part of the story is where that happens. But the rest of the film is nothing to do with that. And usually it's quite the opposite. So, yeah, these happens a lot with biased uh, people who don't uh, understand the actual text. And they only see what they want to see. In this case, he thinks Batman killed Joker. Which is obviously not what happens, even in the book. I, 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 I reread that section, okay? It's not what happens in the book. I don't know what book you and Zack Snyder were reading, but maybe it was like an abridged version. Maybe it was the porn version. I don't know. But it wasn't that one. It wasn't the actual version. All right. Here is Alex Halo. Hey, this is like me saying Smut is not a Fate Zero fan. I like Fate Zero. I don't, <laughs> know, if I, I don't know if I'm a fan. I like the the idea of the Fate series, that it's so big and it's been successful worldwide. I think that's fantastic. Uh, I will argue that Fate Zero is the best animated version thereof. Until you get to uh, Babylonia, then it gets crazy. That's where it's over. The, <laughs> it's, it's over the top. Anyway, Ever Jantz, thanks for the five. Despite his obsession and dark edge, I always saw Bruce Batman as a closet optimist, believing that somehow Gotham can be saved, even if it's a hellhole. Well, 
something's got to be driving him. It can't just be pure rage. Well, yeah, I think I think that's what it is. It's he's an optimist, uh, at least in Batman animated series, which is my favorite iteration of Batman so far. Uh, is that he is he runs on optimism. That's why he doesn't kill any of the bad guys. That's why he steps in for them when they get abused and everything. When on the they're on their way to, uh, he's cautious. He's very cautious. Like if, if they come out and they're on their way to redemption and uh, being healed by the system, he will keep an eye on them. It's like, hmm, did, are they really turned or is it fake or whatever it is? Obviously, it's always like fake or something. He's always right about it because they're awesome bad guys. You can't lose them as villains. But thing is, he's he's always there. That optimism is always there. It's always present that maybe one day they can get better. That's that's even what's driving him with uh, in the Killing Joke, with arguably probably one of the darkest. The most legendary dark stories of the Batman mythos, the Killing Joke. He he uh, he figures out the, that Joker has escaped because he goes to the asylum to talk with Joker to try to end the whole feud that they have to, with each other. Like I need you need to know, uh, yeah, it's probably going to end with us killing each other. But I just if that happens, I just want to know that I made every effort to settle this. He doesn't want to kill the Joker. He doesn't want the Joker to die or anything like that. Not necessarily. What well, he wants the the fighting to stop. He wants it to end. That's what. That's how the Killing Joke begins. And then, you no, know, the rest of the philo- philosophical discussion and uh, the exploration continues after that. But that's how it begins. That's how it begins. He wants Batman, even in the most darkest of stories. Uh, but Alan Moore even wants wants to end the feud with the Joker. He he has that. He drives on optimism. He runs on optimism. He, he has to. All right, here is Tyler Preston for a dollar donation. Thank you, sir. The only time I can think of when main universe Batman ever uses a gun to kill was for Dark Dark Side. It was during the event Final Crisis, and he used a special bullet that can kill a new god. Yes, I mentioned that uh, half an hour ago or so. I can't remember, but yeah, there are there are many other iterations of of Batman killing or using a gun or snapping a neck and. And either actively like dropping someone into acid or hanging them or whatever. So, but we're talking about Bronze Age mostly, and there's a few Silver Age. So, and some of them are Elseworlds. Some of them are like uh, All Star Batman. Crazy or something. Yeah, like things are over the top, and it's just like a, a whole different universe. But yeah, that's we're talking about main universe Batman in that regard. Okay. Jurassic Park dinosaurs as a positive thing but when one watches the rest of the movie everything changes in the same way yes this one panel of the dark knight returns seems to suggest that batman is entirely against the use of firearms entirely against killing but when you read the rest of the book everything once again changes one of the most interesting and essential aspects i i don't we... <laughs> Okay, that's that's the one point I wanted to bring in. Yeah, is that uh, that oh, if you read the rest of the book, obviously it's full of like death and everything. That guy was just cherry picking, but he just kills to the same example, one example over and over again. It's oh, anyway. <laughs> it's about the dark turns is the challenge that Frank Miller poses to the legend of the Batman. He doesn't write Bruce Wayne's character as a moral and virtuous hero who does only good. In fact, I would say that The Dark Knight Returns yeah, takes a far more pessimistic approach to Batman than Batman v Superman does. No, it doesn't. I would say it's a more realistic approach. Yeah, more realistic. It's it's not more cynical. I mean, it's, it has a positive, optimistic ending. That's It, it does. Like, just, like the whole thing with the nuke and everything going off, he, Batman's leadership, him getting rid of guns, him controlling the riots and settling things down during the time of crisis, um, they is it what allowed Gotham to become stable where the rest of the country became unstable. Like Gotham was like the one city that actually remained fine during the, the, the nuclear winter or whatever what, ha- what happened. So it was more optimistic. And then this, this final showdown with Batman vs Superman uh, happened with uh, in the, in that comic book and Bruce Wayne didn't end up dying and Superman ended up, um, we saw with the Superman kind of care for Bruce. And we get to see like a better world, like Bruce Wayne left behind him a better world for having come back as Batman. It's just what happened. So it, it, Gotham was led into the light. It was better, led into a better state and maintained stability during a chaotic time. Uh, so yeah, it's, it ended up in a, a uh, optimistic ending. As Batman vs. Superman ended up with Bruce Wayne deciding to, I guess, start the Justice League. 
but that but Superman ended up dying for almost no reason at all because uh, I, I think one of the excuses is that the spear could only be thrown by Batman or something, which makes no sense. I have no idea. But yeah, it was contrived to be the death of Superman and everything. It was kind of stupid, or really, really stupid. There was there was no uh, I don't know. It was there was no philosophical exchange, nothing like that. It's just okay. Superman has died here, so we're gonna have we're gonna contrive things so that Superman dies by by Doomsday because that's what happens in the comic book. It's it's more pessimistic. It's very pessimistic in Batman v Superman, and even after Batman supposedly turns the new leaf and becomes Superman's friend because their mom has the same first name. He still kills people, and he still goes in there and shoots the guy's backpack and has him explode. He still kills people directly. So it's not like he got, he turned to leave and said, oh, I better not kill people anymore in the movie. Uh, he still he goes, okay, I'll help you out, Superman. And then he goes off and kills more people. <laughs> so it's not like he turned, like, there's, it's not like there's an arc where he, he goes back to his non-killing ways or goes back to more noble ways of doing things. He just helps out Superman now. It's. I still say it's very strange to to not come with a gun and then start using guns to kill. It's it's very inefficient. I don't know why you're going that far. It's like, oh, look, I'm so cool. I can disarm you and use your gun. It's like what? Like just <laughs> anyway. Miller writes Bruce Wayne's character as an old, senile, hard-headed, delusional. Mess don't think he's senile. He's so- senile and delusional. Pretty sure he's not senile. He's a little bit crazy. A little bit, but he's like it's not really a new crazy. He's more like an old crazy, like the 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 Batman. It's like a beast inside of him, to, uh, yearning to come out. And he kind of shaves out of himself, knowing because the Batman wants to come back. The Batman part of himself, but he's not senile. He's a little bit crazy. He's not delusional. He's just a little bit crazy with I his think, other identity trying to break itself through. I think he's always been a little bit crazy. It doesn't make much of a oh, difference yeah. whether you get older. It's just still. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna put some tights on again. I'm gonna go swinging from buildings. It's like okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, same amount of crazy. Joker kind of mentions that too in the Killing Joke, where like something bad must have happened to you. Otherwise, why would you dress up as a bat and fight criminals? Uh, so it, yeah, Batman has always been a little bit crazy, a little bit uh, abnormal in the head. So when Frank Miller has that happen to Bruce Wayne in the in the book, it's not new. It's something that we can kind of make sense for Batman to have, and it's, it's, at least, especially in the most private moments. Here is Mike Testa. Hey, Mike, how you doing? If Snyder want, wanted Batsy to kill, uh, go with Nightfall, where, shocker, it's still not Bruce Wayne killing. That is the only way you can have a Bats who kills. Okay, uh, Nightfall and the whole arc, uh, that was Jean-Paul Valley where uh, Batman got his, his back broken and he needed a, someone to sub in for him before he healed, and that, that was a whole strange uh, fiasco to get his back healed. And then that spawned the the Azrael comic where Jean-Paul Valley has his own uh, story and the Order of St. Dumas and all these other crazy characters pop up so uh, yeah no it's that was a pretty that was brutal that was one of those stories where just a lot of people died and you're like oh it's not Batman it's someone else so <laughs> yeah, Azrael is a, is a killing machine <laughs> it's kind of crazy so obsessed own legend that he does things like shoot a man with a gun then hypocritically condemn the weapon a few pages later as if he didn't just use one miller creates that's that's not a few pages later that's like a several books later <laughs> that's not a few pages this isn't just shoot the gun and then it breaks it in half okay it's, it's totally different circumstances and as we said before he canonically within the the book he did not kill anybody he didn't shoot he might have shot the guy i don't know Whatever happened during that exchange, he didn't kill the guy. He killed nobody. Yeah, there was no it's... bullet hole in the guy's shoulder. Like, we don't know exactly what happened in that panel. It's implied he shot him in the shoulder, but we don't know what that did. Just disabled he definitely him. didn't kill him. Yeah, it disabled him. Yeah, same idea. The guy was holding a kid, and that's why Batman was there. He didn't want, to, he didn't want the kid to get hurt. I remember that joke in uh, uh, the two, what's that, How It Should Have Ended YouTube channel. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and Batman's in, in the Nolan verse, and he's he's on the he's on his bat bike or whatever that that motorcycle is. <laughs> he's like, "Come on, come on, hit me!" And, he, and the Joker's like firing his his machine gun, and Batman's like, "Ah!" He's just screaming. <laughs> and then you see him. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> the Batman. <laughs> and, he's, and he's sitting back in, in his coffee table. He's like, 
Didn't kill him. <laughs> Still alive. I'm Batman. <laughs> How'd you run over the Joker without killing him? Because I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. It's an unreliable and the character of Bruce Wayne, which is what makes this novel so good. Not because unreliable it narrator. The easy and yeah, I don't know what he's talking. Unreliable narrator. About. narrator. Which, just, you get, to get like thought bubbles in his thought process whenever you see him, but there's he's not like it's not like Bruce Wayne is telling the story to you from the future, or he's forgetting something or being prophetic or whatever. It's just no, he's telling you as is what's going through his mind as the scenes like, transpire. Like to, in comparison, three hundred is an unreliable narrator because three hundred is the the Spartan who survived retelling the story of Leonidas and the 300 Spartans. It was where there's monsters and why, uh, why, uh, what's, it, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Persian emperor, Persian King. I can't remember, Xerxes. I can't remember his name. Xerxes. Yeah. Xerxes. My Xerxes is a huge guy and looks like a God and everything. Whereas beasts and the elephants are huge and all that way. It's so extreme. Cause he's, it's a story being told. You don't know if it's exactly how that's how exactly how it went down or not. So, yeah, it's an unreliable narrator in 300, but it's not the same formula for The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, I, see, now I want to go back and read uh, Dark Knight Returns because I'm like, is it really an unreliable narrator? Like, really? You should, though. I mean, it's, uh, it's a little hard to get into because Frank Miller has a bad habit of doing talking heads forever. It's, oh, this one person on television t- says this thing. Next I know. Doesn't... It's just that when these people start using literary terms, I'm like... Jeez, do I have to really prove this guy wrong and go reread the book? And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Pretty sure it's an unreliable narrator for Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, I, I don't remember that at all. I think I would have clued in on that very quickly. So, anyway. Comfortable ass hero, but instead focuses on the compromising and uncomfortable nature of the character. This is an important place to... The one important distinction between the movie and the book is that in the book, it looks like the, the leader guy has this really erect nipples. Uh, in the movie, they changed that to weird spike nipples. Right, yeah. Thankfully. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, that's uh, that's one change I'm grateful for. Thank you very much, movie. Yeah, Frank is a bit uh, kinky. He's a bit weird. I, that's why I kind of like him. All the best guys are weird. Like Frank Miller, very weird. Um, uh, I mean, Alan Moore, very weird. Frank Miller, also very weird, but in a very different way. Neil Gaiman is also weird, but he doesn't act weird. He <laughs> doesn't act weird, but it gets, his weirdness guy kind of comes out in his writing, but he's good. He's good. I, you have to have a little weird abnormality. Uh, so I don't know. It seems that's the pattern. Have, you're, all the great writers have this weird abnormality to them. You, right. can, you can still see that in Brady Snellis and, and Chuck and, uh, Chuck Palahniuk. They even have that weird stuff in there. So well, it's, that's it's, kind of what they're they're going. They want to push that envelope and absolutely they're trying actually really hard to do so because that's where all the good writing comes from. So it's, uh, trying to, trying to tell those stories from life and put them into a fictional scenario is, is a little tough sometimes. So yeah, no, he writes those, those really crazy stories, which are awesome. So yeah, that's what we want. All right to start because Snyder like Miller did not want to fixate on the mainstream mass appealing superhero that we all love but instead wanted to work with a challenging and broken version did, of that though. character I, I would argue that Frank uh, Zach was just like what did Frank do let me do that <laughs> only screw it up because he didn't know what he was doing pretty much yeah he was like, oh, what did Frank Miller do? I'll just use that, but take the heart and soul out of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just do not see Zack Snyder as some philosophical literary genius. I just don't. I, I it, he, Me neither. You, you listen to like Harlan Ellison and, and Gaiman, and they're very different people, but they've got some... They can sit and talk for hours. And really just, good. The best writers have usually have something to say. And, and just ramble on about all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. Zach, I, I just, he seems like a nice guy. Like that's, I, I can't see him articulating much. Like I can't see him writing essays. <laughs> I can't see him giving a lecture on storytelling. I just really can't. I'm sorry. Neither can I. None, the, not in any, any perspective. I don't want to tell you how to... I, he might, he might tell you how to do colors or sure. how to do camera lenses or whatever, but in, in terms of 
storytelling, the physical, philosophical elements underneath good storytelling, characters and things like that, not really. Yeah, no. I, I'm not here to put him down because I'm sure he's excellent at other stuff, but that's just not his field. And it just doesn't sound like he has the mind for it. The same with J.J. Abrams. Like he just does not come across to me as any kind of writer. It's just exactly like comic book or otherwise. Just take any piece of fiction. I don't think he'll or any format. He'll he probably wouldn't do a good job. If it, I don't, I'm not. If I, I don't. I'm not really going to go to Zack Snyder if I want a story written. I'm going to go to Zack Snyder if I want a story where all the heroes hang their head in, in a brooding manner. He's really good at that. All right. Okay. The only difference is that Snyder actually writes his version of Batman as someone who actually redeems themselves. <laughs> Pulling okay. himself out of the abyss and back into the light. What? What did? Okay. When? Wait. What? When did he do that? When was he ever in the abyss? I think it's, he means like because Batman has fallen, has fallen, has fallen, and he's supposed to be like the, the dark, broken Batman. And at the end, he redeems himself. Wait, wait, wait. So I guess when he lost his parents, he was in the abyss, and that's what he, he was always in the abyss. I guess when he's he's saying when when he lost like. Robin or whatever in the movie when he lost Robin or when he, whenever he got to the idea of how many people say it that way how many heroes say it that way that that part where he's he becomes the killer Batman that's when he's in the abyss he's broken and fallen or whatever he wants to call him and then he redeems himself I, I guess somehow I, I, by, he redeems himself by killing more people I, I, guess. I, I do not see the Dark Knight Returns as a redemption story no it's not it's a hero returns story. That's why it's called the Dark Knight Returns. I don't think he feels guilty for anything. No, he doesn't. He sees a new problem that he can't that he can solve, and he goes, "I gotta, I gotta fix this." And then he goes and tries and solve it. Yeah, he, he pulls himself out of retirement and he comes back as Batman when the city ne- when he feels the city needs him the most. If there was a redemption story, he did something bad, and he has to correct that. And I don't remember that at all in the book. Exactly. So the reason why Frank Miller didn't do the write the redemption character that Zack Snyder supposedly did is because Dark Knight Returns is not a redemption story. That's why he doesn't redeem himself because there's nothing to be redeemed from. Yeah. Frank Miller writes him as the good guy. Frank Miller writes he loves Batman. He wrote he wrote Batman as always correct. Like no matter what happens, Batman is in the right. It, it's this is how he wrote him. That's this is how it goes. He has to, in order for there to be a redemption arc. He has to have been wrong at some point, but he's he just isn't. Except for when you know the the Joker, he, he snapped the Joker's neck, but that's kind of the, that's a, kind of the rising the stakes sort of thing, where he kind of shows that he's he's not entirely stable and he can be pushed to breaking point. He's not the Batman he used to be exactly. But if that if he wanted to say that's his redemption thing, then that should probably happen in the beginning, and then he should probably be, feel guilty about that, and then spend the rest of the book redeeming himself. But it's not a redemption story. Yeah, I'm. It's I'm, a hero's I'm trying story. to think of the movie where is he sad for the death of Robin, and I'm just like maybe, but that's it never seen that way. It's never addressed. He doesn't feel like he's haunted by Robin's ghost. He doesn't. He's not talking about it. Like, how do I know? He's. I don't know. I have no idea. He glances the suit once, and that's it. That's about it. <laughs> I don't this dude this this guy is reaching. I don't like dude, come on. Don't make shit up and expect us to go with you. Or if you believe in something, explain it. Yeah, exactly. By establishing these three counterpoints, this video ignores the opportunity to actually critique Snyder's Batman, opting <laughs> okay. instead to critique a woefully misunderstood version of it, one that is exceptionally easier to critique. By oh, okay, okay, this is this is getting dumb. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't he was watching the movie wrong guys he interpreted it wrong <laughs> you're watching movies wrong you guys you you he, this guy never read the comic and he didn't watch the movie properly like really this guy <laughs> i mean a lot of people read the dark knight returns and liked it a lot of people it's not just oh you you read the comic book correctly that's why everyone liked it no it was written well that's why everyone can kind of grasp the themes it's, and the motivations and the character of batman in that one it's kind of hard to misread a comic book like really difficult it's basically a series of images with dialogue and narration it shows you and it tells you in different contexts the, like you don't have to think about visualizing; it's right there. Your your brain—you could turn that part of your brain off and go, "Oh, here's a here's a slice of time 
<laughs> That's exactly what happened. Okay, great. If so many people and, and so many people like this have a, are raging against this movie, then maybe it's not the people who watched it wrong. Maybe it's the movie that was written bad. Maybe there's something wrong with the actual writing. It, it couldn't provide what it wanted to provide over the course of the time it was playing. It could be that. Okay, here's Great Scott. Uh, thanks for the five. Unpopular opinion. The only good comic book movie Zach did was Watchmen, even though he really botched the Aliens Manhattan stand at the at, in at the end. You know what? Uh, I, I, I like Watchmen. I, I don't want to see it. <laughs> I, I like the movie. I like the movie, but again, it was... Uh... It's not. It's I, I, I hold it as different than the comic book because there's no way that he can do the comic book any sort of justice, really. Uh, but I like the movie in his own entity. However, it's another example of Zack Snyder just making a good film because he used someone else's story that was already well written. Alrighty. Leveraging this understanding to your audience you're creating an easy argument to knock over. An argument that is not being made by the other party. A straw man. What other... What do you... I what straw man? I don't... What is this guy talking about? What other is he, party? It's, it seems like he's critiquing the movie directly about what he saw. Is, I mean, uh, is the, the other, only straw man is a joke, I guess. Is the other party the movie? Like, what is he talking about? I'm not really sure. I, I just, like, dude... Like, <laughs> All you have to do is address his points and say he says this thing. Here in the movie is where he's wrong because it's shown here. And we, we could look at that scene in the movie and go, yeah, maybe he is wrong. And that would be that. He's, he's trying to rationalize this guy's wrong because he clearly watched the movie wrong. You're like, dude, come on. <laughs> oh, you just watched the movie wrong. That's all he said. That's all he's, he's doing in this clip. Before you guys go and try to make fun of the filmmakers for not doing their research, maybe try a little harder to understand not only uh, the film in question. Oh, isn't I, that I rich? I don't think he has any room to 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 chastise anyone on not on not doing research. What a uh, what a load! Give me a break. <laughs> All right, did you know Batman kills people here? Oh, did you read the rest of the book? No, because that would destroy my argument. Did you know <laughs> that it's heavily implied that Batman killed a Joker? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Oh my God, this guy! <laughs> uh, he learned as long as people talk about it, it's good. This is this is sad. Anyway, I mean, we have other kinds of sadness when we watch videos like this, but this is like he's he's destroying himself. He's not aware of it. Question: <laughs> Material that you're basing your entire argument off of. Also, high top. Love your stuff. I'm sorry that this was most likely your first impression of me. I probably spent way too much time watching all of your video essays and your original shorts. Please don't sue me. Don't sue me. Part three, the killing bad. I can't even remember what the previous parts were. They were just so monotonous. <laughs> there was nothing in them. I just, dude. Ah, oh, these people, I swear, they got to take a logic class or a math class for once in their life. Uh, so far, I'm not convinced. Uh, I'm not convinced I misunderstood Zack Snyder because you, the only evidence I've seen so far has been wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, they always have their, their essays or whatever bullshit in parts. Oh, yeah. Like the, I've, I've figured it out. I've categorized my video into parts. Therefore, I've... I've rationalized my ideas you're like yeah the code and your ideas, the code. your ideas are still shit <laughs> they don't make any sense <laughs> you know uh, it really well, helps when you have evidence and then you rationalize before you we just... did have evidence the evidence was just wrong though <laughs> 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 i interpreted the evidence as x therefore i'm right it's like what <laughs> doesn't make any sense that's not how the force works <laughs> just, just i can invent knowledge no you can't okay Okay, the direct quote I have from that section is so after the, the Joker dies and they think it's Batman, the the Dark Knight returns and goes, the Joker's body was found mutilated and burned. Murder is added to the charges against the, the Batman. That's exact quote from the newscast after that whole event with the Joker. And then the whole event, the Joker comes in and I think it's part three, the fall of the Dark Knight, the book three, wherever it is, which is a long time after the whole 
scene where he shoots the gun at the guy and supposedly kills him. So if that if Batman killed him, it would not be murder is added to the charges against Dark Dark Knight. I mean the Batman. It would be another murder is added to uh, the charge of Dark Knight. Another I don't know, another murder or something like that. Murder has just now been added to the the roster of crimes he's wanted for after they think he killed the Joker. So no, canonically speaking, as far as the, the comic book is concerned, he killed nobody. All right, here's great Scott. Uh, this guy must love Scarecrow, Strawman Galore. I think. Oh yeah, that was one of his parts. I think. I do like Scarecrow? They need to use him more as a Batman villain. Although I do like the Riddler most of all, but they don't want to write him because he's he has to use riddles. <laughs> yeah, you have to actually have intelligent things to say. Yeah, you have to think. Whereas we're opposed to the Joker is like, ah, what Joker? What crazy thing is Joker going to do this time? I don't know. Let's go write this comic book. And yeah, the Joker. Could, the Joker could write riddles too, but they're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all that don't make any sense. Uh, the Riddler requires some thinking. If I ever get, I got hired at DC, I would just write the Riddler all the time. I just love it. That'd be awesome. Write the Riddler? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Rogue's Gallery is always great in Batman, but uh, there's a that, so few that stand out. So. Those who believe since Batman kills in this movie, the filmmakers must therefore believe that it is morally acceptable for Batman to kill, period. Make the argument that the film... Uh, I don't think that's relevant. Who cares what they think? Well, what's the big deal? The fact is that he kills, and thing is, the the whole philosophy of Batman, as far as we know, the the ethos has grown around him and that he's developed into, uh, is that he doesn't kill because if he does so, he he can't go back. So the very fact that he kills in the first place, it's already too late. It, it's already too late. He, he can stop killing, right. but he's already crossed that line. That, that no was longer Batman. That was a very famous scene in the Red Hood saga, where he's telling that to uh, well, his ex Robin that uh if he crosses that line he won't he won't go back like that's like because then it, it'll be like oh batman killed the joker but he's not going to kill me i'll keep doing what i'm doing and then everyone just sort of feels immune to to this event so that he would have to eventually just kill everyone because they would treat it like a like a one-off like a mistake oh yeah because batman doesn't make mistakes <laughs> never does where's the other drugs going Except for that voice. <laughs> that was a weird one, yeah. It's like, Christian, we want you to ru ruin your entire voice for this movie. Can you please do that for us? It's like, can I just use a synthesizer? It's like, no, that's too cool. It, it gets kind of funny when he's philosophizing and, and like talking to Joker. He's like, do I believe in God? He's doing that voice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of silly. Oh, God. That, that was the, uh, the police interrogation scene? I can't remember what that... He's trying to argue with them it's just like okay forget this shit can't hear a word he's saying <laughs> it's a problem with all these films i can't what is the main character saying i can't understand <laughs> get, let's get bane in here oh thanks that's great yeah oh, uh, hello batman hello batman <laughs> i'm british sure I was, I was born in the dark you merely abducted the dark i was born in it i was born a troll you can't understand the word i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> get back to you the people that's why I like the Oral Knots version because the Oral Knots make a. I can hear what the hell Bane is saying, whether he's <laughs> rapping or talking about food. That's that's my favorite. Anyway, they seem to make him a luchador simp that has no brain, like they did in Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> luchador. Essentially, it's the design. So it's like if he was a Mexican man, I'd be like, yeah, that's that's good. That's good enough for me. Do whatever. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awesome. I a Mexican caricature. Hello, Senor hello, Robin, hello, Senor Batman. Batman. <laughs> I am here to I break will, you <laughs> with my outrageous <laughs> accent. <laughs> outrageous accent. Like a Zorro Bane Zorro character. <laughs> I'm going to free Gotham from the evil clutches of the bat. Like, what? <laughs> I'm the good guy. No, you are evil. I will prove it. <laughs> Makers do not understand the character of Batman, but maybe the viewer doesn't understand the film. Let <laughs> okay. me let. Oh my okay. god! Okay, here we go. Here we go. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, let's take a breath. Let's, let's, let's get ready. <laughs> let's what, jump into this. What a what a giant brush that was. Let's let's offend everyone. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing he's a Patrick Williams fan at this point. Oh my god! I don't. I, guys, you don't understand the creative genius that is X. <laughs> 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 I can't even finish that sentence. <laughs> Holy! I mean, it, it's easy to make Batman kill. That's the easy part. It, it's easy. 
bat, people that make Batman kill, it's a lazy way to write him. It's a lot harder to make a Batman who doesn't kill. Batman chills out on on buildings, the tops of buildings all day. He could snipe people if he wanted. No one have any idea what the hell happened. Not easily. But he doesn't. He gets nitty gritty in your face, breaks your bones, gets you to feel it. What you're doing is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um, Mark in 3D uh, modern DC is just a diabolical plan of the Riddler <laughs> oh my god that'd be cool uh, it's real yeah. it's it's a meta story oh, okay anyway let's let's learn about how we're watching movies wrong yay Great, because that sounds awfully pretentious it's hard to compare the Batman in this film to his other on-screen iterations, as he plays a completely different role here than he does in, say, The Dark Knight. We should first look at the role that each one plays in their respective films to see if they work the way the filmmakers intended, and while they don't have to be consistent with their comic book counterparts, it is generally accepted that if they aren't, that makes them bad characters. So I'll play ball and I'll go along with that line of reasoning as well. Okay, uh, no, but if you're not giving us anything to work with, that is what we fall back on. It's it's basic stuff. You have the most popular character in media history, of all of media, I would argue, and you're not filling in the blanks. We got to do it for us. And all of a sudden we realize, oh, he's he's a violent son of a bitch, like super violent. Oh, he's killing people. He, oh, he has guns. He has machine guns. He has missiles. He has all this shit. And he's actively shooting cars and blowing things up. It's like, okay, that's a little different than the Nolan verse. Or yes, he did have guns, but he was very par particular of what he did with them. Like he was using them to destroy things around people, to save people, not directly kill people. He didn't shoot someone with a missile. Yeah, he just, like, yeah. That's why he, like, he would he could have run over the Joker and killed the Joker right there, but he didn't. He swerved away because that's not what he does. Man is written in the Dark Knight franchise. Works well for the story of those films. It tells the origins, rise, and eventual death of a beloved hero who possesses great virtue. Therefore, Batman, the main character, acts in a way that is consistent with those themes, while simultaneously being consistent with his, at least mainstream, comic book counterpart. It was or mainstream. To get a better understanding... So... He still didn't get anybody. I mean, he, he flipped it away so that he can make a distraction. Is the the building started to come down? Uh, what is he getting at? I don't. I... And the reason why he did that is because they ordered him to kill somebody, and he refused to. Yeah, that, that's what I remember about that scene. They they said you have to decapitate this guy, and he flips this the this was it the some hot poker yeah, or whatever. Time to go, like time to go. And then uh, it, it wasn't even like that guy was an innocent person. That guy was not just a thief or something like that. That guy, they said the guy was a murderer. So that guy kills people, and he still definitely refused to kill the guy. Right. All right. ...of how these things are structured, here's the way I like to visualize it. The themes are ultimately what the film is about, and are therefore at the top. The story is a conduit. That, why would it be at the top? Why is it a hierarchy? You know, story leads to that. You have to have a good story for us, good structure, good narrative, in order for the themes to come out. You can't just have themes and I, then... I, I, I like his definition. I agree. Themes are what the story is about, but it's still part of the story. Like everything is the story. So yeah, themes are part of the story. Story leads to theme. Story leads to everything. I don't know. Like, why would you? I, 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 let's just keep going. This this is fascinating to me because he's just inventing shit. I'm like, wow. Okay. We remember the story, and then when you explore the story, you get the themes. Like, oh, that's what it was about. It's kind of like that Plinket thing. You might not notice it, but your brain did. That's where kind of themes come in. People kind of pay attention to the story. They're intrigued by the story. And then they appreciate the themes when the story is done well. Okay. Through which the themes are communicated and the characters are the vehicles which... That, that is... Wow. What is going on? Oh, this, this is fascinating. So he thinks everything is character and from character comes story and from story comes themes. Wow. This this tells me a lot more about him than all his other crazy Batman bullshit. This is this is interesting because I would argue characters are, are, are very important to, to Absolutely, most. Absolutely, very important. But they're not 
they're not before story. Story is the, for, the start of everything. Oh, absolutely. Then you have characters. Then you have a bunch of other stuff. Then you have, you know, ideas put, I, I think, and philosophies. I think it's, it's pretty good here, except put the themes at the bottom. Put, well, okay. Put the story first, whatever you're talking yes. about. Then have your list of things like characters and setting and conflicts and all these other ideas. And then, and then play around with the higher level ideas like themes and philosophy and inner conflict and overall arching plots and all this other stuff. There's, but even then, I, I don't even like putting things in a hierarchy. Like, why would I even bother doing that? It's it's more like a symbiosis. Like the uh, a good story leads to to theme, and then themes kind of elevate the story. Uh, this is yeah. This is a very strange approach to categorizing a, a movie or whatever he's trying to do here. It's and I don't even know if this is a pyramid or what this is. Uh, it's the chicken or the egg. I, I don't know. Basically saying the themes are what the story is actually about. The most important thing that is you have to pay attention to. That is backwards. That's kind of, that's that's kind of what you said. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You can't just go and I want conflict. It's like what? No, I want conflict between man and man. It's like okay. Who, and though the Lord who? just said, "Let there be conflict." Yeah. It's just, okay, it's just it's completely generic, man versus machine. Okay, that's a theme. Uh, and then <laughs> what's, what's the story about? The theme. It's like no. <laughs> it's about the themes. Ooh. Themes. Themes. I've lost. My brain. All right. <laughs> Drive the story. These elements, if done correctly, should work in perfect harmony with each other. Let's sure. apply this to the Dark Knight. The theme of the Dark Knight is incorruptible virtue in the face of evil or belief in the good of man. The um, I don't even know. I, I can't even, I have to watch the film to, to be aware of that, but. I'm sure that, that was the case because it was at the end of it was, uh, the conclusion was, uh, there's all those people out there who believe in good. And they're not, there's, they're not as ugly as you because the prisoners didn't blow up the innocent people and the innocent people didn't blow up the prisoners, which is something that the Joker was counting on. It didn't happen that way, though. If you're talking about a hero's narrative, it's always the guy triumph, triumphing over evil. So good versus evil, man versus man. They're all very similar. Um, but when, you, when he says theme and what a story is about, I need literal examples of that theme being executed. And I need that to argue that's the major, because a major theme to me is just, if there's only one theme, there's 51 or two themes, there's only 51% of the film is that theme. And I always say the example of zombies, uh, you're shooting zombies in a zombie horror post-apocalypse world or whatever. So if you're having multiple themes, the story is about multiple things, then it's gonna be 34%. And you're gonna have 33, 33 of the two other themes. So it's always, always, always showcased in a practical example. And then you could say, oh, not only is there this, there's a higher interpretation, there's a higher understanding of good versus evil. That there's a message, there's a, there's a lesson that you're learning from why does Bob keep killing zombies? Does he hate them? No. He's trying to protect the world and he thinks the less zombies there are, the better the world will be. And that is the the overall message that you could interpret as such. And maybe he even says something along those lines. But that's not inherently necessary for the plot. And you don't need some some prolific or, or philosophical dude who shoots zombies in a post-apocalyptic scenario where he's just trying to survive. It's not like some, I do this because my mother told me back in the day that you should always save money. And it's like, what? No, it doesn't make any sense. Like, what are you talking about? It's like, you can't attach some some folksy uh, uh, philosophy to uh, being practical about killing zombies. So um, different definitions of theme, I'm sure. But let's go with this. Belief in the good of man. All right, let's go. Story must therefore be about a virtuous hero who was put in a situation in which that virtue could be compromised. Yes. That's, uh, he's uh, put in, he's put in several. I uh, that's what the Joker was trying to do in that one, the Dark Knight, anyway. So he's he's basically iterating what he just said. Yeah, the story is about the 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 Batman meeting his moral adversary. I got Batman, the guy who's compassionate and has rules, versus the guy versus Joker who has none and has no compassion at all. This is he's saying exactly. This is okay. He's getting this wrong. He just said the same thing. <laughs> This this uh, I can move this sentence above story to be the same thing. 
I'm sorry. It's, it's about it's kind of order versus chaos kind of thing. The yeah, the ability of morality. There, there's other things happening in the film, I know, but it's just like this dude is incorruptible virtue in the face of evil is a virtuous hero whose beliefs are tested. Like that's exactly what's happening. The story is about Batman versus the Joker. That's what the story is about. I don't know why uh, he's breaking it down. This is this is completely unnecessary. You're 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 going you. Uh, he's going too far. Just, it's my story becomes first because it's the story is Batman versus Joker, and the themes of that become the incorruptible virtue in the face of evil, the the belief in the good of man. That's what we, that's what the struggle kind of erupts into. But the story is about Batman versus the Joker. That's the story. Joker comes in as a terrorist and all that stuff, and the Batman has to stop all of his schemes. I, I'm going to give some leeway just because the definitions are are very generic anyway, and depending on how we learn this, you could be using a different template. But fine, we'll run with this. Let's see what he says. And that belief tested. So the characters must include an incorruptible virtuous hero. That being bad. He, this Okay. All he's doing is saying exactly the same thing three times over. <laughs> All right? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's not about him being totally incorruptible. It's about him making choices in the face of this horrible challenge to his virtues and then maybe not making the right ones. That's how you get a guy who's not perfect. That's like a guy who's who has to push himself to the very brink, and uh, you get you get Dark Knight Batman. That's why people like it, because, yeah, Batman pushes his morals. He goes... He does these things, and it ends on that note where he kind of becomes the knight in tarnished armor when he uh, when he absorbs the blame for the deaths committed by Two Face. So he takes the blame so that Harvey can main, they maintain a lie, so that what the the better the world can be a better place. Essentially, kind of moral checkmate scenario you get from Watchmen. These are all theoretical concepts. He's not actually pointing to the film. He's not pointing to a scene, and this is what I mean by I need a reference to what you're talking about because all he's doing is repeating himself and he's saying, here's the idea, here's another interpretation of the idea, now I'm going to give you a name with the same idea. And you're like, oh, Batman, yeah, we, we yeah, we knew that. He's virtuous, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, just, you should have said that. Put all this together in the theme category. The incorruptible Batman is fighting the the challenger of virtue the joker that that would be the theme even at the end of the day he still doesn't kill the joker uh, no. even after he killed his, his love of his life after he corrupted uh harvey dent the the joker's falling to his death he still saves him he still make he still makes sure he he lives to see prison Th this is this is unnecessary amounts of semantics that i don't know who this helps this just confuses me it's redundant. It's it's like saying uh, two plus two is four, and he's going one plus one plus one plus point zero one plus point zero one plus point zero one plus point zero one blah blah blah, blah is four. And you're like, dude, yeah, we get it. It, it. You don't have to go through all the minutia, and plus we're, we're talking about whole numbers, so don't break it down. You don't. There's no, nothing is gained from doing this. In fact, the definitions are off. Okay. Anyway, I'm I'm just. I see stuff like this. I go, dude, did you study creative writing at all? It doesn't seem like it. Uh, he's got, all done, he's, done from he's got the, whatever. he's got the building blocks and he's like slamming them together. I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> all right. Man, amps the Joker, the driving force that poses a threat to the protagonist's values. The okay. dark Knight tells a beautiful story about a symbol of justice, a morally incorruptible idea who, despite losing everything, will never abandon his convictions. The characters drive the story. Who, who loses everything? Batman? Batman, yeah, he, he kind of does. He loses the love of his life. He loses the, the, the integrity of, well, himself, his hero status. He kind of loses everything at the end of the movie, but he, see, he saves Gotham from the Joker. Why so interesting? It doesn't tell you that what he did was wrong or right. It is it's something that happens. And so you're left to kind of uh, figure out what you know. Make your own conclusions of what he did was right or wrong, or what's what's going on. All right, here's Mike Testa. Thanks, Mike. I would love it if they did a movie with Mad Hatter as a Batman antagonist, or at least pair him up with Scarecrow for the fact they play mind games. I think uh, there's a lot of great animated Batman episodes with the Mad Hatter, Toy Man. Uh, what was it? Alice, that little girl who never grew up. Um, 
was it Susie or Alice? I can't remember. Like those sorts of stories I think would be very, very cool because they're not hard to pull off. You don't have to go crazy with CGI and this and that. And you could you could focus in on the conflict very easily because it's just a person with uh, a childish idea which is violent and dangerous. Kind of like the, uh, the, the penguin in uh, the second Batman film where he's got those crazy penguins with rockets on their back, some r- ridiculous looking thing, but do it with toys instead. And, uh, you know, whatever crazy ideas they have, so maybe poison, maybe an explosion, maybe a bomb, go crazy. That that would be really fun to watch, I think. Lots of lots of tech, but not, don't make it one of those silly uh, modern day computer tech silly stories. Make it practical, make it all down to earth. I think that'd be easy to do, or at least fun to watch. Anyway. Story. The story communicates the themes. Now let's talk about the story of Batman v Superman and how Batman functions in that movie, which is very different. But you didn't say anything. I think a hard pill to swallow. When... But he didn't say anything about the movie. He just kind of just yeah, Batman vs Joker, and that's it. So he yeah. tells a beautiful story, and then he moved on. <laughs> like, so you, yeah. okay, like we like first of all, I might have seen the movie, but maybe I don't. Maybe I haven't seen it in a while. I don't remember all of it. I think he just it'd be wanted, helpful to explain. I think he just wanted to give us his rendition of the definition, and it's like, okay, fine. Yeah, Batman does fight the Joker. Yes, there's one is virtuous, one is not. Yes, <laughs> thanks. Come on, give us something. Is, is there some value to that? Like, what's the tell us the quality of that scene or or the the theme of that? What's the value of that? Why so is far, that this good? everything Why here is. is it seems kind of empty. This whole, this whole thing just seems kind of empty. It's I, like I, yeah. feelings and, and emotions. I and could not, I could not rationalize logic. the theme of man versus man. Bravo. What's your point? This is this is like I don't know, dude. You're 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 a few steps short of an essay. You you did some thoughts, and then you wrote them down, and then you went nowhere. All right, uh, let's see where he goes with the next movie going into this film that Batman, while being the protagonist, is not the hero of the story. In fact, I would go so far as to call him the villain. Okay. The film opens with his fall. So the idea of an anti-hero is very much in the realm of Batman. He's an, he's an antagonist to Superman. I'm not sure he's he's supposed to be portrayed as the villain. I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. I think they are fighting each other because that's the premise and they're trying to set that up, and that's the problem with the damn film. It doesn't make sense. Why? And you have all this time getting to that point, and all we get is, oh, I have your mom. Go fight Batman. And that's that'd be cool. And that's it. It, ha- it happens within five minutes. You're just like, what? What was all this set up for? What were we doing all this time? And trying to go to parties and bugging the systems and getting data. Like, What is this bullshit? Totally waste of time. It really was. From Grace, deliberately setting up a character who no longer values those perfect things or those diamond absolutes. How, how do you how do you know the inside of Bruce Wayne's mind? Can you can you tell us where in the film that happens? Can you show us? They get this silly little uh, prologue that starts off really well, and then he starts getting raised out of the will by bats, and it was hilarious. I it's, it's broke everything. I really like the first. Ten, I always say I really like the first ten minutes. It shows the the, the basic of Batman, death of his parents. The music Batman, was really good. The it was uh, on point. He runs into the smoke. He holds a little girl, and he's like furious that the buildings are coming down. I was like, holy shit, that's that's a great setup. And then everything else sucks. <laughs> everything with Batman where they're really playing Batman Bruce Wayne would be the guy who runs in the smoke Bruce Wayne would be the guy who who goes in there despite his own his own health or his own you know, putting himself in danger he would be the guy who, run, who runs in there to save people from falling buildings and things and the uh, the whole opening where it shows us that the uh, little glossing over his parents death and everything and the funeral that was really good up until the bats started raising him out of, out of the well in a hilarious manner like what? What's happening now? Why is there all these bats raising around the well? That seemed kind of silly over top. It kind of really broke the moment. But everything up until then, fantastic. Everything was on point. The music was great. It was. I thought it was going to be a great film at that point, but uh, I was eventually disappointed. <laughs> Meta- metaphors <laughs> where you defy gravity probably aren't the best idea. Yeah, have him like climb out on his own, not raised by bats out of the well. <laughs> I would have okay. liked to have seen 
Batman climb that out of the well. Little boy Batman. Just like, oh, I gotta I gotta struggle. Have Why do we fall, Bruce? So we can pick ourselves up. That would have been well, I think that would have been a bit too much of a copyright, but <laughs> <laughs> uh something along those lines would have been beautiful, yeah. Anyway, uh, Mike Testa, Mad Hatter has mind control and others have fear gas. Mm, okay. Yeah, that could work. I'm not a big fan of mind control in general, especially with Batman. It's kind of a cop-out with like Poison Ivy. I think that's too much. But temporary mind control, it could, it could work. None of, none of that crazy, I kiss you and you can do everything I ask. It's like, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> uh, anyway. The dream, they took me to the light. A beautiful lie. Batman is the beautiful lie. This par- No. What are you talking- well, How is Batman a beautiful lie? I thought, I thought it was like the, the good optimism. The optimism that Batman was supposed to have, that was a beautiful lie. Like, obviously, it can't happen. That's why he starts killing bad guys. <laughs> I don't think Batman himself was the beautiful lie. He, Batman he looks, it looks like he exists. was born as that night when he lost his parents and he became Batman inside of him. And he had to bring him out through years of struggle. So, the, so much that inside, he's no longer Bruce. Bruce is gone. The facade is Bruce. The reality is Batman. He's not a beautiful lie. He is a reality. Bruce is the lie. I don't know if he's a beautiful lie, but he is a lie. And that's the joke. That's the thing. He's tr he's acting out the playboy fantasy without actually being a playboy. He doesn't hang out with chicks. He does it for appearances here and there, but he's he's on the clock. He's got It's a Sherlock Holmes thing. He's he's like, got, yeah, I'll, I'll hang out with the Russian ballet squad. Yeah. But only for appearances. He's got a lot to do tonight, like a lot. <laughs> so he can't hang around flirting around with women. I mean, maybe for appearances, he might shag a few, a few every times a year, but other than that, no. Paragon of justice, temperance, fortitude, and prudence serves only as a some research, I guess. of his failures. All of those close to him that what died, failures? those he couldn't save. He isn't calm and... We just told he failed. We don't actually see any of these failures. That's why we're not emotionally with him. And you don't kind of understand. It's like, okay, well, you say you failed. D did Robin die? Is that is that a truth in the movie? Maybe. It's implied that he did. Yeah, like, like we don't know. He's he's looking at, like, as a reminder, like, this is what could happen. Like, of what? Like, what? Did he die? Did he leave you? Did, did he... But the thing is, with the, with a Batman who kills... In this universe, he probably would have killed the Joker then, right? He probably would have said, okay, you killed Jason Todd, I'm going to kill you. And that's it. And there would be, there would be no Joker. So that, why is the Joker still alive? That would have been a very poignant dialogue with Alfred. It's like, Master Bruce, Never remember when you killed Joker over the death of the audience? It's like, oh, shit, he did? Like, that would have been kind of important. That'd be cool to see. Like, How about open up with that? Like, the, the Joel Jason Todd scenario. That would have been, it wouldn't have been too hard. Just open up with... Uh, Joker beating Jason Todd to death and then having the oh. conflict be right there. Oh, and I then just, Batman kills Joker. I just I just thought of that because uh, I don't know if Jason Todd is the, the trapeze guy. Trapeze That's a Grayson. That's a Grayson. But if he's if he's being you know flying into the air and up to the light and he's like grabbing something and it's it's Jason Todd or whomever <laughs> I was thinking maybe he could have the imagery of, of a trapeze or a high wire act. I guess that's wrong. Something. There's nothing of that in the movie. It's just, yeah. I'm angry and you, I failed and you, that's it. You go from like bright happiness to like, oh my God, I just lost my son or whatever the analogy is. So that would that would make sense. Like, oh, he's he's he went from really like promising optimistic to, oh my God, life is horrible. I lost my son. I can't go on. That's why story arcs and character arcs are, are important. You have to show us the beginning in order for, for the middle and the end to have full effect. So in Batman vs. Superman, says, oh, he's angry. He said he failed. Okay, you're telling us that we can kind of get it, but we don't see how much he cares. You don't see how much yeah. it affected him. You don't see how what what Batman was like before he became the Batman that we see. You don't see how much he how to what degree did he change? For I know he just he was the same guy. He just started killing people or something. Or I don't know. We don't because we don't know. We don't get how Batman was. This version of Batman was before he apparently changed the Batman he is now. 
Here is Coolman229. Bruce is a violent murderer because Robin died. And what about every other version of Bruce who had Jason died and didn't become a monster? Yeah. I, I really, really wanted to know what the hell's up with Bruce. Ah, anyway. Controlled anymore. He's angry. He still fights crime, but he's not fighting for the same reasons anymore. He no longer... He's always been furious. I don't... <laughs> It's, he's, he cannot sleep. He cannot live a normal life. Every night he goes out like a madman to stop crime so he feels some sense of redemption or justification for what happened to him. That is the, that is the, the origin story. Whether that was expressed in the film, I have no idea. He's just hurting people. I'll use life the way he once did. He is no longer fighting to protect others. In this film, Batman is not a paragon of virtue. He is a shadow of his former self. The film itself doesn't treat him like a hero. Alfred constantly fighting with him about his methods, Luther taking advantage of his rage, and the first scene with Batman is shot like it's straight out of a horror movie. This film isn't telling the story of the journey of a virtuous hero. It's telling the story of a fallen one, a man who has abandoned that virtue in place of cruelty. His 20 years of tragedy have hardened him to the point where he's completely lost himself. And guess what? That's just the setup. The film takes a broken Batman and asks the question, just how far down can he fall? How close to the point of no return can he get? I feel bad for those who didn't like or understand this it's scene. Pretty already set up. He's those pretty fallen already. Call it stupid and nonsensical. Well, I mean, it is just calling it how it is, you know, <laughs> stupid and nonsensical. Yeah, why is he broken? Can you tell us? Yeah, can we fix him? What, what happened? Is there a warranty on this Batman? Can, we, like, can we turn him and get another one? We we get that he's violent and angry and pissed. It's like, at what? Why? That's all you got to do. It's really, it could take five seconds. It could take 10 seconds. I don't care. Oh, my parents died. I better go on a moral crusade. Oh, no. Jason Todd died. I guess I better start killing people now. I guess. Okay. I guess. Yeah. That's all we got. One glance at a freaking suit with spray paint on it. You're like, okay. And we, we just assume there was Jason Todd. We don't even know because. We just see a suit. Like, if you go from the perspective of someone who just saw this movie without ever seeing any comics or knowing anything about the lore, I mean, I have the advantage of knowing a little bit about the, about the lore. Uh, but if you don't know anything, you're just there to see a Batman film. Like, was that Robin's suit? What happened? I guess the Joker killed him. Did he? Did he care? Who? Which? Which Robin? Who, who was this guy? Yeah. Who? What happened? What's going on? Why is he so angry? Who, who is? Who was that guy? Ah. <sighs> This is a beautiful moment in which this fallen hero is reminded of his original cause. Which which that, moment? Which moment is he talking about? Maybe the one where his parents died. That part I actually like. The one where yeah. they go over the parents' death. I like that part. That That's the part I, I give two thumbs up about. The best part of the film. I loved it. I actually loved that part. It was really, really good. And the music was on point. The deaths were really well done. Uh, and then you had Bruce in the beginning going going in straight into the build, just, uh, the falling buildings. And looking up at the sky and seeing all the, the chaos and trying to protect people. That's Batman. That's awesome. And then the, the death of his parents, that was awesome. That was great. That was well done. Very well done. And then it, it, the well done part kind of ends. <laughs> we go into this trash that's the rest of the movie. So uh, death of his parents does not justify him killing people, just so we understand what's going on here, or what he's trying to say, I think. Batman fights so that no little boy has to stand helplessly by and let another murder their mom and dad. Right. So, what happens if the, one of the criminals that he kills has a has a daughter or son? <laughs> we, just, we just see that in, in Suicide Squad where he's like taking down de a Deadshot, but in, in Deadshot has a right Deadshot, Will Smith's character. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has a daughter. He's a criminal. He's a super criminal, but he has a daughter. Uh, yeah, I would I would suspect that some of these guys from the crime because they have family. You, you actually explore that, by the way, in uh, Nolan's trilogy, where Bruce Wayne becomes a thief a little bit. He, he, he commits some crimes because he knows, so he can feel the pressures of poverty. So he feel the pressures of not having enough and having to resort to crime in order to in order to survive. So you can understand the criminal mindset that helps him do that. So when you if you're having a philosophy of the of Batman who wants to step in to uh, protect people from not going through the same thing he did, then he can't kill. He he can't because if he starts killing bad guys, and he's, he's inevitably going to kill somebody with a with a son or a daughter, and that's 
That's what's going to happen. My 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 daddy was killed by Batman. How is that going to help anybody? Now I was going to grow up and say, oh, my dad was killed by Batman. He's not a hero. Time for me to get revenge. It's cycle of revenge. You, you don't. Uh, that's why the the cycle of revenge kind of ends when one guy stops, because otherwise it never will be. It never yeah. will stop. Like with with the original Batman, he would just beat up criminals, and the police would go, "Well, that's still assault, but they're doing our job for it. He's doing our job for it, which is good." If he starts starts a body count, they're going to be like, "Okay, this guy's a murderer. <laughs> we got to cap. We got to stop the Batman. He's killing everyone." <laughs> That would be a huge problem, and that would make his life a lot more complicated. There's there's, there's logistics behind murder, and uh, just because you're the Batman doesn't mean you're going to get away with it. Especially when, exactly. Especially when you're being hunted by mobs, the actual mafia, multiple mafias, as well as the police. <laughs> it's just like, oh God, your your life is going to become a living hell. <laughs> Why did you say that name? Oh, Martha, why did you say that name? Oh, stop! Please, stop! Why did you say that name? It's his mother's name. It's his mother's name. Oh, okay. And then he stabs him in the chest, right? Because he already knew he had parents. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that would end. Is, isn't that ironic? Our, our mom's names are the same? Yeah. Slice. That's pretty cool. Anyway. Stab. <laughs> I just stab in the chest. Okay, we're done here. What, what, why would I, this, let's just, let's just keep going. Yeah, we get it. He it's, throws away his weapon that he once coveted in such disgust and rage. It just makes, it's so silly that a 1% chance, Alfred, there's a 1% chance he could turn evil. He must be killed. Oh, we have the same, our mother's the same name. Oh, forget that 1% chance. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Now, it, now it makes sense. If her name was Sandra, oh, he would be dead by now. Time to die. <laughs> Sandra, that's a dumb name. <laughs> a, few, a few consonants, a few vowels shifted around. <laughs> oh, dead man walking. That's what it's uh, Exactly. You don't deserve to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Save Bruce. Why don't you... Wait a second. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Am I in trouble? What's going on? Who am I? What are you? What are... <laughs> Dad's name. Wait, what? <laughs> Nothing makes any sense. No, save. Uh... <laughs> Just pick all his friends' names. <laughs> like... Oh, God. <laughs> save Alfred. What? How do you know that name? <laughs> no one knows that name. <laughs> Alfred. <laughs> this is Dad's name. I'd be kind of weird. Oh boy, that'd be that'd be like what? I, wait a second. <laughs> I mean, I, as as weird as Scott Snyder has gotten, the comic book writer, uh, I I read a, a lot of his run on Batman. It was really good. He got, he got a dark story of Batman, a Batman who still didn't kill, but it got really dark. Uh, he's the guy who introduced the Court of Owls and Alfred's new role, which was really interesting. And his parents, where his parents, it's kind of implied that the Coat of Owls got rid of his parents, or the, they're the behind the murder. And uh, the, and we get we go into the history of Gotham and the the legacy of the Wayne family. It's really cool. It's really interesting. And then we get to see the the Joker run, where Joker, with, who's who has no face, comes back with his own face as a mask and starts running rampant. He's a force of nature in that story. And but we get a really dark story out of out of uh, Scott Snyder, and at least in those iterations, the, those two storylines. And then we have um, we get to see Bruce Wayne's flaw come in, where he kind of pushes away everyone else. He trusts him for a little bit. Then they, they come in, and it's noted that he, put, he keeps pushing people away. He becomes too obsessed with their safety because his his parents' deaths traumatized him. He doesn't want to lose another person like he did before. He doesn't want to. It hurts too much. So he pushes people away. He wants people to say, remain safe. And they take that as, you don't trust me. You don't, you don't believe in me. So they kind of leave. And you get all of that in Scott Snyder's Batman, uh, but he doesn't. He still doesn't kill. He's still a good dark story. He doesn't kill. He falls to. He succumbs to his flaws a little bit. He still doesn't kill. It's a dark story. It's pretty much everything you want from from the Zack Snyder was Zack Snyder wanted from Batman, except he's consistent with Batman's character, the ethos of Batman. Yeah, I gotta get back into Batman. It's, there's a lot of great stories out there that are still being made that. Uh... We just lose them because there's so many. 
And yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. It's the only character that can make real stories about anymore. Yeah. All right, Mike Testa, what's happening, buddy? Uh, ah, but Smud, that's where Scarecrow comes in for the the Mad Hatter. You see, the mind control is temporary, but if combined with fear toxin, could be permanent. Okay, uh, y- you know what? You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with uh, uh, toxins and and uh, magical evil fear juice and this and that. Uh, yeah, I go for it. I I would love to read it or see a movie about that kind of story where you get minor characters play around with uh, things that, like toys and, and little knickknacks, kind of kind of back in the Tim Burton vein, but not by in the style of Tim Burton. I think that would be interesting. Uh, zero, thank you for the five. Uh, in an alternate universe, Batman kills Superman because he's mad that someone has his mom's name. Yeah. How dare you have my mother's name? That doesn't, how dare you utter my, my sacred name that matters so much to me. I hate you. Dead. Done. If anything, yeah, exactly. if anything, it would infuriate him more. He'd be like, oh my God, how did you know that? Slice, kill, stab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Like let's let's infuriate the Batman, the man who's about to kill you. Okay, great idea. Save Martha. <laughs> he immediately jumps at the opportunity to save Clark's mother, not because they're now best buds. For now, while we are the best of nothing friends. to do with it. He goes to save Martha to save Clark from losing his mother. I don't know. I saw them fight Doomsday together. They seem pretty pretty buddy buddy by that point. Hey, she with you? I so, thought she was with you. Let, they they completely fit each other like, like, like old friends. Let, at that let point. me get this straight. You're trying to tell me the threat of the destruction of humanity is less important than saving this guy's mom. Yes. How in the holy hell did Bruce go, okay, calculus time, what's more important, life on the planet Earth or me saving par- <laughs> Me saving kids from the death of their parents. One percent chance. <laughs> One percent chance he has to die. Oh, oh, your mom's the same name as my mom. That's so cool. <laughs> that cave, it's really neat. <laughs> it's like Bruce. You realize the death of humanity is exactly the same, if not worse, than what you just chose to say. There's a certain aspect of scale here too. It's not just the death of parents; it's the death of everything. <laughs> Should the bat with their main con- character consistent with the rest of the movie? Shouldn't Batman go and okay, I'll save her, and then he kills Superman to end the threat he believes Superman to be, and then goes to save Martha and say, "I'm sorry, I had to kill your son," and then you know leaves or whatever. <laughs> All right, fine. I saved his mom. Time to kill him again. <laughs> <laughs> The, the logic here is that because his mom's name is Martha, he's no longer a threat to humanity. I I I, I guess I I don't. He mentions that he has parents before and during the fight. Like yeah, I bet your parents told you that you were something special. And so he acknowledges that the, that Superman has parents. So it's not like oh he suddenly realizes that he has parents and he's a man or he's part human. He realized he knew he had parents. It's just the moment he says Martha and realizes that Martha is he- also his mom's name. That's when he kind of throws away his spear. You'd think, as a detective, you would have researched the, um, you know, the, the the financial records of whatever, wherever. He, like he would have, Batman would have figured out where Superman was grew up. Like that wouldn't have been hard, right? Yeah, at the very least he could have done that. And then he goes and finds the names. He goes, "Huh, Jonathan Kent and Martha Kent. Isn't that interesting?" And then he would have made the re- revelation. Oh, his mom's name is Martha. I better not kill him for whatever dumb reason. But he would have done that. Like Batman does these things. He he he's obsessive with information. It wouldn't have been hard for him to fit. Hmm. What does he look like? Did he even figure out Superman was was Clark in the movie? Did that I, I I assume he did. Did that even come up? I don't think so. Like that would have been like once he starts doing that. It would have just been a series of, of like events to like do a background check and then boom, son of Jonathan and Martha Kent. I mean, if Lex Luthor could do it, I'm pretty sure Bruce Wayne could. I mean, something is really wrong with his Batman. 
if he couldn't even do basic homework, that any, not even a private investigator, anyone could do. <laughs> Just go look at the city registry from the past 20 years or 30 years or 50 years, whatever. This, the, the, what's it called? Not the syllabus, the, um, the census. Like that, that's a thing. Even in rural towns of America, you have to do a census. So, hey, Batman, the greatest detective. Because that's who Batman is. Wait. None of your promise. Martha won't die tonight. This is the first time. Why not you go with them and help them out? I don't know. That'd be nice. I guess you don't have to because Batman's in charge. Okay. Crazy man about to kill you is going to save your mom just because he said so and you're letting him. Okay. Go for it, Clark. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. If, if someone was about to kill me and I say, please save my mom, and he goes, oh, okay. I'd be a little bit hesitant. I'd be like, wait a second, really? <laughs> What mom? Is her name Martha? Because if she's not, you're out of luck. Do you know? <laughs> do you know where she is? It's like, no, I'll figure it out. It's like, really? I knew you had a mom. I don't care. You had a mom. I mentioned you had parents earlier, so obviously I don't care. I'm like, you have paying parents. <laughs> it's like I'll just put everything in your hands, Batman. You figure out where my mom <laughs> is. And oh yeah, her name is totally Martha. Yeah. <laughs> and we really see Batman in this movie. He still kills people. Very clearly so. It's almost like he's fighting his way out of the abyss as if he was trying to save his own mother. By butchering people? I don't think so. Are you mad? I'm going to I'm going to redeem myself from the abyss of torment and hell by killing people. That'll work. Do you, do you that... see the problem with that there uh sir? Yeah, apparently killing people always makes things better. And that's <laughs> that Batman in this movie, he redeemed himself by killing people and saying, okay, I was so risky your mom, and he kills everyone in the kill, warehouse. Just kill a bunch of people. That'll make you feel right as rain. That's that's how that works. <laughs> it's like he's he's solving his problems by murder. It's like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Worked for the Punisher, or <laughs> maybe to a more extreme extent, an evil bad guy, but not really a bad man. Yeah, not, really not, not the good guy. Jesus. <laughs> Holy crap. The heart of darkness. Just got to murder some slaves, man. That's all you got to do. Just murder some black people. You'll be good. Apparently, according to this Batman. Holy crap. All right. Other. And when he does, and the night is over, he goes to Luther with the intention of branding him and killing him. But he doesn't. Now he's back. In this film... Batman serves a completely different purpose, and it works. Let's go back and look at the themes, story, and characters of Batman v Superman. Oh, the boy. themes. Okay, for, first of all, how did he do that? How did he go to his maximum security prison and just walk into Luther's cell? What is going on there? Does he pay people off? That seems a little over the top for me. Now, second of all, he goes in there with the intent to kill him, and then he doesn't. Oh, bravo! <laughs> I guess he's. I guess all those guys he killed earlier in the warehouse. I guess they didn't. They didn't wait long enough. I think he, he killed all the poor people, but he didn't kill Lex Luthor, the guy who planned it all. Okay. I don't mind the the you know, the escape artistry of Batman. It's all amazing, and you know that's kind of part of the mystique. But that was a bit too much to swallow. Um, Walk into an over the top maximum security prison. Usually he can do that, but usually it's like because he let in. Like you do that with Arkham Asylum because the the cops and the the people who work there. Oh, that's Batman. Obviously he can come in. Yeah, that would take a lot of planning. And like hacking or whatever, like electrical control, security control, like all these things to to do that. And there was no setup for that. It's like, okay, he's amazing. Batman can do cool shit, but you still have to show how, like even a little bit, like a button he presses on his smartphone or, you know, something like Alfred does something like something. It, it's, it's a little too much too late. And it's right at the end of the film. And he goes in there to scare him. Like just, He just, I'll be watching you in here. He's like, okay. Thank, thanks, yeah, Batman. 
<laughs> like, do you have better things to do there, Batman, than just scare a bunch of people <laughs> in You're prison? That's creepy, Batman. Yeah, that's weird and dumb. <laughs> of Batman v Superman include a redemption of the corrupted or the fallen. Who is re okay? Come on, dude. Who is who is redeeming who and how? I'm not following. And a reestablishment of the belief in the good of man. So the story must include a fallen hero in a situation in which their fallenness is challenged. And fallenness is that a word? <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but yeah, fallenness is fallenness. I, I guess your dictionary.com gives me a, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this is a term that Heidegger used. <laughs> Who used? Heidegger is a very, uh, I, he's Austrian or German philosopher, but he, he has some of the most difficult philosophy texts to read. So if he invents a word, it's like, this is probably not a good word to use. <laughs> I guess I guess it's a word now because he invented it. Fallenness. Fallenness, yeah. All right, so Batman's a fallen hero because because it's just because it's like, okay. A really, you know, we make a really cool story. Seeing the story of Batman falling, that would have been cool. Yeah, he just he's gets not, fed up. He starts being the piss out of guys too far. He's like, in the context of Batman vs Superman, the DC Mar universe, cinematic universe. He's not a hero at all. He's just an anti-hero. He's a bad guy. Well, he's not a bad guy, but I mean, I guess you could say he's a bad guy. But he's an anti-hero. He's not a hero like Superman is. Yeah, he or, is supposedly. canonically, I would say, uh, uh, an anti-hero, but he's not like breaking people and turning them into like quadriplegics. He's fracturing their bones and getting them to talk and putting them in jail. The real Batman is not an anti-hero. The real Batman is actually a hero. The Batman or Superman Batman is an anti-hero at best. Uh, okay, he's he's a fallen fallenness fallenness hero. Yeah, really cool to get to see the the Lucifer fall from the sun, or, we, yeah. or fall from from heaven. See Icarus fall from the sun. We didn't. He's just a bad guy, and we kind of have to imagine what happened. We have to imagine the fire. We have to imagine what happened before Batman fell. Oh, he, obviously, I guess he was good at some point. You don't get to see that. They're really interesting. We got to see the story of Batman, who was good, and then yeah. he, we see the journey of him falling. But we don't. He's just a failure. He, <laughs> just, he just he just kills people. Truly really redeem the characters must include a fallen hero, and then of course, the driving force which poses a threat to the protagonist's core values. How how does Superman challenge Batman's values? What are you talking about? All all Batman does is say he's gonna kill humanity. That's bad. We gotta stop him. That's it. He didn't talk to him. He didn't say why did you break that building? Why'd you kill hundreds of people? In the Dark Knight Returns is a better philosophical battle between Batman and Superman than Batman vs. Been Batman v Superman by Zack Snyder did. Because he didn't really have one. It's like I hate you. I hate you more. I hate you more. That's what it was called. That's basically how far they got, how deep they got. All he had to do was start this series of questions. Why? Like, and, and that would have been really awesome to have like this crazy propaganda campaign of Batman spray painting the the city of like why did why did Superman kill or something like that. And there's this this growing resentment to Superman that everyone's like, yeah, why the hell did he kill all those people in Metropolis? And then there's this big, well, he saved us. Like, yeah, but at the expense of like like 10,000 lives or whatever. Like, God, it was so many. I have no idea what the death count was. Like that would have been getting it going. Have a plan. Have a reason. And then they confront and say like, well, I didn't know about my powers. I'm an idiot. I don't know how to fight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry is not good enough. Like all all this this anger coming out at that, and it's just, there's it's not there. He just wants to kill him. That's it. And all the other shit as is far all. As it goes. Yeah, the rest of it is just all the the political bullshit with Lex and the CNN and all that crap. Like, oh. thanks, Zach. Great great story. However corrupted they might be. 
The bat was merely con- How is Bruce Wayne corrupted? Please tell me. How do you get yeah, there? Because in the context of the cinematic universe of DC, he was never corrupted. He started out corrupt. He was already an anti-hero. We never got to see him being a hero. He just seemed like a jerk. That's it. As far as that's the only characterization we got from Batman, him being a jerk and anti-hero. Never, they're going to see the noble, the noble knight, noble yeah, hero that with, Batman was supposed to be. With the Punisher, he we know why he kills. Like it's clear. It's not like I feel like it. It's like no, no, no. You have to die. You are scum. You are causing chaos. You are killing families. You need to die. And he's very clear on who he kills and, and why. And the show makes it very clear. Batman v Superman, he just brands criminals knowing they're going to die in prison. That does not sound like Batman at all. Why not just kill them yourself? Like why, why, uh, why do that? And then they had to, they had to uh, kind of sanitize the plot. They kind of plug the plot holes up with, oh, Luthor just paid them off. <laughs> Luthor just paid them off. It's kind of like saying a wizard did it. Uh, magic did it. It's, it's really easy. It's yeah. really, it's like a, or the force did it. He, it's really easy. Plot insulation. He, just, oh, uh, he's paid off. he paid people off is chilling out on a yacht somewhere in Metropolis Harbor or whatever. It's like, what? How? Even and if then he just, Finds everything out off screen. Like he's yeah. okay. Well, we found out everyone's identities, and it is all all this crap off screen. So you don't even know how I did it. I'm just smart. Even if he like comes back to public eye, like they want to do the whole running for president story arc, it's like you uh, escaped from prison. You're a fugitive. Who in the world would vote for this next? Yeah. He's not even charismatic or anything. He's kind of a I don't know, like a gerbil on crack. He's like I, I just, he's nuts. I just want to talk about the uh, uh, my dad, and <laughs> uh, uh, it was really weird. He's like a, a more insane Joker. Yeah. That's what he felt like. It was kind of weird. It, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust this guy around knives, let alone the political office. I guess it might be a point in his favor considering he's right for politics. But you know, I wouldn't vote for the guy. <laughs> hey, I, I could talk to Putin. I'm good. <laughs> hey, man, give me a come chance. on, man, <laughs> come on. <laughs> How do you pronounce? Is it Putin? Jill, what's his name again? Yeah, thank. Okay, I got it. Uh, Putin. Is that what it was? He's Canadian. Yeah, I could, yeah he's from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Onto it for him to express his rage and violence, and Bruce has lost himself in that darkness, a darkness that can only be pierced by the blinding light of hope. What are you, what are you talking about? What hope. Are, what, Superman's dead. Which, how, how, how does Superman provide hope to Batman's darkness? Explain that one. It's, it's the movie is hopeful because Superman dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, what what is this guy talking about? I, I just don't get it. It's kind of like once the movie, once Super Batman steps out of the way and starts being a bother, uh, Superman can sacrifice himself, I guess, or something. And that makes it hopeful. The hope of Superman. The hope of... <laughs> the hope of a Superman who doesn't really care about the human race. He just care about Lois and his dad and his mom. Yeah. And he, he kind of goes through the motions of being a hero for their sakes, not really because he has any sort of integrity. And his, his dreams, his weird trippy dream sequence is like, <laughs> you can't kill him. It's like, oh shit. I guess I <laughs> uh, Save Lois or something. Like, like, you know that, that uh, save the cheerleader, save the world sort of thing? What we got in Heroes? Oh, yeah. It's like save Lois, save the world. That's pretty much what it is. But because it's so obscure and the flash is a moron we don't know what the hell is going on in this crazy <laughs> plus it's a dream sequence you're like was that a dream was that real like i don't know man <laughs> what the fuck is going what is going on in this movie i don't know hey yeah So what about Superman? This one is going to be a bit more difficult for me, because contrary to many comments I received in my last video, I don't just blindly love everything that Snyder does. His Superman oh, you don't. is something that took me a while to come around to. The very first time I watched Man of Steel, you I remember to wanting okay. so much to love Snyder's Superman, but there was something that kept me from doing it. I couldn't put my finger on it exactly. Man of Steel, in my opinion, is a pretty exhausting movie to watch. 
There's just so much action and destruction that by the time the film ends, I was just so tired of seeing it. It had its moments for sure. The parts that stood out to me- Wait a second, you're telling me this- To watch this film makes you tired. My face is tired. I'm sorry. When I watch a film and it's a good film, I'm like, wow, that was a great film. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it again or talk about it again. Are the backpacks going to go on for the rest of the video? I hope not. <laughs> this is, I mean, dude, just say you don't like the film. It it made me tired. I <laughs> Okay. Do you like mean- he said he also said that he doesn't universally love everything Zack Snyder does, and then said, "At first, he didn't like the Super- Zack Snyder Superman, and then it kind of implies that uh, later on, I loved alone, love him." So. Yeah, it's it's like, do you want an intermission? Like, what's the problem? Did you not take breaks? Like, what is? You can pause video nowadays. I, like, what was it emotionally draining? Like, what? Like, this is this is the thing we talk about with uh, the Last of Us Part Two, which is so tone deaf it's just constant death and darkness and blah and blah, and blah it's like oh we get it we get the message it's you're, you're you're boring us with the message it's so tiresome you want it to be over it's exhausting and you go oh what a great game it's like what <laughs> what are you talking something which makes you feel like crap and tired is good for entertainment value Usually when we talk about negative emotions like catharsis, we talk about tragedy films like Romeo and Juliet, uh, anything by Puccini. Uh, We go there to cry. That's the point. We go, oh, what a great cry. What a sad story. It made me feel sad because that was the focus. It never makes you feel exhausted because when you're exhausted, you don't have the energy to feel other things. You could feel a little sad, but you don't have the energy to express. Like that's, a a, a media should not tire you out. It's kind of like playing a game you like a lot and you've just been going at it for eight hours. It's like, it'll exhaust anyone. It doesn't matter what you do. Anything for eight hours will knock you out. And at that point, it's like, okay, I'm not having fun anymore. I got to rest. Because you're not getting the same feedback. You're not getting that, that emotional high or whatever. That should be a good sign Something is unbalanced in this media. It's too big. It's too much. There's too much death and destruction in one note of whatever. So, but this guy says, eh, it's okay. It's good. It's tiresome. <laughs> All right. There were the moments where things slowed down and Snyder took the time to give the characters some breathing room. I still wish that the film played out a little differently. But that's not what this is about. This is about Superman as a character. I never understood what it was that I didn't like about him until I watched Batman v Superman. I wanted so badly to know why he let the destruction in Metropolis happen. Why he didn't do the obvious thing and take Zod to space or an uninhabited area. Yeah, that's a good question I never learned the answer to. Why didn't he move the fight somewhere else? He did try to bring them up into space, but they just came crashing down again. (laughs) Like, yeah, they did. He should have just punched him in the space. Yeah, just, just leave him up there. Who cares? He can't fly. Forget about him. <laughs> I think he can, but you know, just have him come back down and then go somewhere else. I mean, even Goku, who is pretty much his brain dead, knew, hey, maybe we should move somewhere else to have a fight so don't have any destruction yeah. that would, that's unnecessary. Ugh. Why he let so many people die? Why isn't he more vocal about his intentions? I never understood why couldn't he just be the hero that I wanted him to be. Oh, the video maker just died. Until this moment right here. This single moment gave me empathy for this god. <laughs> he looks... Oh, man. I, I just Everyone just died around me. So, Again. Womp, womp, womp. You, you feel empathy for Superman because a bomb went off? He just looks annoyed. Like, ah. Oh. A bomb went off. I'm, I'm next to it. People are going to blame me. It's going to look so bad. Like, he's more like, this is more like a Homelander sort of scenario. Like, oh, man. Nah, this is going to look bad on my, my street cred. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it boils down to. I don't know. I, I, I don't feel sorry for Superman. I'm like, wow, that's pretty tragic. Uh, Superman, you think- don't you have like a enhanced reflexes? Couldn't you have like sensed that after? Like the speed of sound would have hit your ears first. And then you're like, what was that? And then you turn around at super speed and you go towards the explosion because you're freaking invincible. 
it almost feels like he, he wasn't even paying attention. He was just staying there, and he just kind of the bomb went off. He didn't notice, it. and he's nice thinking about what should I pick up from the groceries after this? I need some milk. Um, it was some of those muffins that Lois likes. Uh, he's like, "Oh no, there's a bomb went off." <laughs> yeah. That's what it looks like. Is this is actual, actual Superman. He'd be, you know, looking like con- really concerned, like, "Oh no, something just happened." He would look yeah. way more concerned than this was a shopping list in his this, head. This was like a few meters away from him or something, and he couldn't, like, he didn't care. It's like, okay, all right. Great, great hero story. Thanks, Superman, for doing nothing. This man, this kid from Kansas who just wants to do the right thing. Uh, No, he doesn't because he just stood there. That's not the right thing. Doing nothing is not what a hero does. He acts. He said they're looking annoyed. Yeah. Well, I guess this hearing's over with. I guess I can go home now. (sighs) <sighs> this guy makes mistakes. He fails to recognize the obvious. He constantly shifts his focus and hastily jumps at chances to do what he thinks is best. Oh, oh so he's not Superman then. You're, you're telling me a different story. This is not Superman. This is some other guy who's from Krypton who makes mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> he is superhuman. He can move really, really fast. He's indestructible. He wants to help people, but he just sometimes doesn't. Oh, and he blows up buildings. Therefore, I forgive him. Like, no, sorry. Only to have the really blow up in his face. Sound familiar? Despite not having most of the lines like in the movie named the, the, after him. The DCEU? <laughs> like the DC Cinematic <laughs> Universe that blew up their faces? Yeah, yeah maybe. I, I wonder why things aren't working out. I know, let's reboot Suicide Squad again. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, hopefully, who knows. The way that the fellows' his character is really something special. He's a reflection of you. No, of he's me. Not. Of the viewer. No. Instead of being a perfect superhero with all the right answers and a larger-than-life alien who never makes mistakes, Superman is a flawed individual, uncertain of his actions. Okay. Uh, what is that? Are we talking about Batman v Superman? Or are we talking about Man of Steel. Man of Steel. I guess it's Snyder in general. Yeah. Well, Man of Steel is the origin story where he's just learning, and Batman v Superman, he's he is Superman, so he's you know, arguably it happens a, a few days prior to the events of Batman v Superman, and then you know a month after, and then months after, time skips, what have you. But I think he's got the formula figured out. How to fly, how to use heat vision, how to move really fast, right? Hopefully. Anyway. He wants to be a symbol of hope and unity, but he polarizes everyone. Realizing this is what made me love this iteration of the character. Superman's conflict in this film is choosing whether or not to be Superman. I mean, he is being Superman. He is doing right, and he... You see, Superman would not have this conflict. Superman is and always will be the same way Batman is and always will be Batman. He doesn't he doesn't need a, an existential crisis. Like am I am I am I am I the Superman? Should I should I be really fast today or really slow? I don't know. Like, should I save that kid or what what would my dad say? Nah, I don't feel like it today. Yeah, is that is that the right thing to do, Dad? I don't know. It's always it's always pondered my my coach. Oh yes, yeah. we just don't ask any questions about consequences to save the people's this lives. Is, How about that? This is so dumb. This is not Superman. The, the the Man of Steel Superman is not Superman. We've all figured that out by now. And this guy's like, isn't that interesting? He's contemplating what it means to be. It's like, no, we don't need. That's not the point of Superman. <laughs> He's not a philosopher. He's a guy who acts. Humanity as a result of watching this alien being be amazing, allows us to go, oh, that's incredible. This is what... Kal-El, no. Look, I don't do it. No, no way, kal No way, come back. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, he's going to murder us all. He's especially going to murder that guy being crushed into a car until he doesn't because he had an armband on or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh. He 
is helping others because that's what he grew up believing was the right thing to do. No, no, he didn't grow up that way. His dad said, maybe, maybe you shouldn't. He didn't have answers. That's why Jonathan Kent makes Superman. That's where his ethics and morals in the American way comes from. And they screwed that up. That is like saying Batman's parents never died. Is the equivalent. Something else. The parents just went away. He's not too sure if they're dead or they abandoned him. They just went away. We we don't know. It's like, oh. They're just gone now. Yeah, they're just gone. We don't know. They're just out of the picture. They they never, they're just not talking to, to, they they just left some money with Clark, or sorry, with, with, uh, with Bruce, like a few billion. And they took the rest and they just bought an island and (laughs) no one heard from them ever again. Like, uh, uh, Superman's dad was supposed to be his moral mentor. That's what it's supposed to be. His, because Superman has all kinds of power already, but the morals is what defines Superman and Superman. You can have a bunch of characters in the DC universe that have these awesome powers and with large roster powers like Superman does. However, however, uh, Superman, his thing is the morals, and his dad was supposed to be his moral mentor because he already had power. Yeah, and they screwed it up. They they went. I don't know why they went for the philosophical approach, or sorry, the the doubting approach. Because even as a kid, he was reading Plato. And if you ever read Plato, I don't care what flavor of Plato, whether it's Socrates's Plato or anything really, it's very pro life. It's very like good is pleasurable and pain is is bad. Like everything is very cl- clear. Yes, there are some. Uh, arguments on what it means to be wise and what the virtues mean and all those wonderful arguments. But if you're reading Plato, and I recommend anyone getting into philosophy to read Plato just because it's easy to read, you feel really good. You feel like, oh, this this is why we contemplate stuff. This is why we have metaphysics, and why we think about the, 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 the reality. It's not because we're bored and old and tired. And we have nothing better to do with our lives. It's like this is how we enrich ourselves. This is how we become better people. And ultimately, Aristotle said that the, the, the things I gain from philosophy is that I learn how to behave in society without having have to be taught that because you rationalize good behavior. You understand that is the end result. So if, if you're a kid and you're reading Plato, that's awesome. But what you would get from that is to do the right thing, to be good. And it's it's very clear in Plato. It's very clear in Socrates' Plato. It's, it's a lot more difficult when you talk about uh, Aristotle and Nicomachean ethics. It's a lot more detailed, of course, because Aristotle is much different. But I, I can't think of one philosopher where it's like, even Machiavelli uh, would say, you know, do the right thing because it benefits you. And as a result of benefiting yourself, you benefit others. So uh, I don't get it. I just don't get it. It's, it's, it's a twisted image of Superman. Here's Mike Testa. Hey, Mike. Quick question. Is Batman the long Halloween good? Yes. Go for it. Some people love it and think it's the best. But th- there's lots of really good Batman stories. So Anyway, back to the video. The conflict is when the world responds by hating him, rejecting him, and not wanting the Superman. His conflict is between choosing to 100% commit to being the Superman or to walk away from it and live in peace as Martha. No, no, it's not. He's doing, he's doing both. That's not, the, that's not what the Superman got from the movie. I don't know what Superman you're watching. These, these are just scenes in the movie. He's, there's no conflict here. His mom is like, uh, Clark, you don't owe these people anything. It's like, thanks, thanks, mom. I get it. Thank, okay. I know you're my mommy. And you're looking out for me. <laughs> but uh, bigger bigger things than trying to protect my ego. Thanks. It's okay. And if you and if you read into that and you think that's what the theme of the film is or, or the conflict with Clark is, you're you're holy crap. Are you missing what's happening in the film? It's kind of like the TLJ where Yoda spells out the theme. There was oh yeah, it's about uh, failure. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, failure again, huh? Interesting. I didn't know that. People fail? Fuck me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm glad oh, you, I, you I'm didn't glad tell you me. I'm glad you didn't tell me that. 
I never fail, so I'm, I was wondering. I, I could what? never figure that one. I, I mean, Ray was just doing everything right, and everyone was doing everything right. Oh, yeah. Tell you who the teacher is. Because that's what Luke needs to learn, even though he learned that already, like, three times. <laughs> okay, when you're a Superman and you can move faster than sound, you can do many things, like have a life. <laughs> ah. The Kent set. Be their hero, Clark. Be anything they need you to be. Or be none of it. Yeah, th this, is, this is not... This is not the Kent household. I'm very sorry. Martha Kent and Jonathan Kent would never say that. It's the strangest thing. Because it's supposed to be do the right thing. Like You get out there and you save that boy, son. You get out there and you save him. You save you, those kids in that bus. You are my son and you're going to do the right thing or I'm going to disown you. You have all this responsibility and I want you to see it through the end. That's what teaching morals is. It's not, you, you can be, you, you can do the good thing or the right thing if you want to, son. Well, only if you want, no, it's, you get out there, you do the right thing, son. You go with and you apologize to that person right now. That's what you have in like traditional dads. Yeah, this is, this is like jo joining the military and your drill sergeant going, do everything I taught you to do or, you know, don't, leave. It's like, are you supposed to be encouraging me, sir? That doesn't make any sense. Like, what are you That's how the force works. <laughs> you want me to be here or not? I don't know what's going on. Oh, jeez. All right. <clears throat> Here's Vladimir. Hey, Vlad. Remember when Superman committed mass murder of all the unborn Kryptonians? <laughs> he has the, the codex of every possible genome of the Kryptonian heritage in his body or something. And I'm like, oh, what does that mean? I don't know. It was a plot point back in Man of Steel, but they just forgot about it. It's like you could you could bring back your race. You could, you know, bring wonders and miracles to to, to the galaxy. It's like, nah. I'll just hook up with my reporter friend and, and contemplate being Superman and beat up a man who's in armor. I'm like, okay. That's much more interesting. Beat up bad guys. That's what I'm going to do now. Just yeah. Beat up bad guys. I'm not going to contemplate anything. I'm just going to just go around and beat up bad guys and save kids from trees or whatever. Uh, and, you know, in the comic book, in the comic book universe, Superman actually has that opportunity. He finds, like, a lost city of Kandor or something like that. And it's like a little city from Krypton that yeah. he keeps around and alive and everything in order to bring him back one day. Because of uh, Brainiac captured it and miniaturized it and he doesn't know how to bring it back to real space and yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those odd, cool like it's it's a way to keep Kryptonians contained, but still have a tie to to Krypton in a way, without uh, breaking too many things. Because then you have a bunch of Superman running around, like oh my god, <laughs> how do we control this? So they do a few weird things with uh, Crypto the dog and a bunch of other weird stuff, but you know that's just writers being goofy. You don't know this world thing. You never did. Yeah, just let the world burn. Who cares? You know, I don't care. You don't care. No one cares. We're a bunch of nihilists. Who gives a shit? Just want to watch the world burn. Y yeah, and you can, and you're the one to do it. Just light up the the world with your heat vision, Clark, and say good night. Like okay. Jeez, what what a great message. Thanks, Ma Kent. Real real uplifting there. <laughs> Clark's like, okay, thanks, mom. Uh, do the right thing, Clark, or don't. I don't care. Yeah, get, get, <laughs> well, a, get a job. Awesome. Be a, be a normal guy, or don't. I don't care. You know, well, what an awesome. A lot of pressure, a lot of choices on this guy. You could do the right thing, or don't. I don't care. I'm gonna go smoke my weed. You're an immortal, dis indestructible god figure, but you know, you don't need my me to tell you that. This is like, <laughs> please have pity on us, oh God, or not. You know, whatever. It's your thing. <laughs> you feel like it tomorrow? Maybe maybe Thursday. That's that's a good day for you. Good day for me. You know? I'd like to have my farm still tomorrow. Can you, can you do that for me, Clark? Keep not not burn it. <laughs> okay. yeah. Go burn down the bank that I owe money to. Yeah. <laughs> this is so dumb. This scene is so dumb. It's like, oh, did did the evil man hurt your fifis? Oh, you don't you don't have to, Clark. Don't worry about that. That's okay. Just go off and fly into the galaxy and do something else with your life. I don't care. 
Jeez, be a mom for two seconds, could you? Holy crap. Vladimir Drago, thanks for the 10. Remember when Superman said Krypton had its chance, then destroyed the ship containing all the embryos? That's totally something the Superman from the comics would do, right? Yeah. I don't know. This guy. It's like, look, look at this scene with with Ma Ken. Isn't she great? It's like, no, she's horrible. What are you talking about? We're in Bizarro Land. This isn't your Uncle Ben with great power comes great responsibility speech. This yeah, it wasn't a good guy. It wasn't a good mentor. It was a <laughs> crappy mentor. Can you imagine? Can you imagine talking to Peter going, you know, Pete, just because you have power doesn't mean you have to use it properly. You can abuse it, you know. You can do whatever you want. You're, you're the guy, you're the top dog. What, what are they going to do? Punch you? You're strong. You're amazing. And what's, what's really funny about this part is that it wasn't really, in the original story, it wasn't really his uncle like or Uncle Ben who gave him that advice. It's something he learned on his own because he went off and he, he was selfish. He got powers and he was selfish. He, he got power and fame and everything because he's a kid. He was a kid that was bullied. He wanted to use that to get it back everyone. And he would help no one, he would help no one out except for his loved ones. And then he, he, in fact, that's how that's what happened. He let this this uh, this criminal go. He could have stopped him. He could have stopped this criminal running on the street and escaping the cop, but he didn't. And later on, we find out there was that same exact criminal who killed Uncle Ben. And that's how he learned that with great power comes great responsibility. That's in the original comic book. Yeah. So he learned this the hard way, but he learned it. Superman's like, oh well, you know, I just have a choice, I guess. You, you notice how they kept that in the story of both the re, the reboots of Superman or Spider Man. Yeah, because it's important. It's a very, very powerful message. It's very key, yeah. And we don't get that in Man of Steel. We don't get the 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 morals and the lessons of truth, justice, and the American way. We get another version of Superman we can't make sense of. And it's not that it's too complicated for us. It's just why would these people say this to their son? Do, do do parents know what ch- having children means? Like, do you do you want your parents, do your, your kids, to be like despotic rulers of the of the galaxy? Like Superman can do that. Is that what you're you're teaching your kids? Go conquer Earth or not? I don't care. Like she may as well say, go conquer Earth or not is your choice. It's it's ridiculous. This is not. America, this is not even the planet. Every parent has this ethical reasoning to instill upon their kids, even if it's flawed ethical reasoning. This is not ethical. This is like, <laughs> you don't know them. Right? You don't, you don't got to do anything. Just sit back and have some iced tea. Or not. I don't care. I'm going to go smoke my weed. It, yeah, this is like some stranger off the street. Like, hey, just chill out, bro. Like, just don't worry about it. Like, don't do it. World's blowing up. Yeah, it's not your fault. You can just fly at the speed of sound and stop bullets. But, you know, it doesn't matter. Not your problem. It's like, holy shit. Thanks, story. Anyway, Vladimir. Hey, remember when old Johnny Kent said maybe Clark should have let the school bus full of kids de- drown? Yeah, that was great. Great scene. Fantastic. Anyway, we're almost, we got six more minutes left. Holy jeez. Mother telling him weight of the world's troubles do not have to be on his shoulders. He does not have to take responsibility for all of this tragedy. He can simply walk away from it, marry Lois, continue to work as a journalist, or honestly, get whatever job he wants. Uh, after the world's blown up? No. <laughs> <laughs> after... Metropolis is is leveled by whomever, <laughs> by what is the the, the giant uh, Ninja Turtle they created? What was it? Uh, Doomsday. It's like, uh, yeah, mom. Uh, I the can't, cave troll thing. Yeah, I can't run away from that, uh, ma. It's kind of destroying everything in its path, like everything. And go beat it, Clark, or don't. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, you know, you you figure that out. I'm I'm just an old woman and senile. <laughs> And what maybe, do I know? Maybe you should stop listening to me. <laughs> dirt, dirt, dirt. Want some pie? <laughs> I got some apple pie. It's your favorite. <laughs> okay, mom. Have a have a good night.
<laughs> she should have been like, you get in there, son. You do the right thing. I don't care what, what what's happening. You get in there, you save those people, son. All right? Or don't come home. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. And live happily ever after as someone loved and cared for. You think Lois would love a man who is amazing at everything, is a god, and just does nothing with it. Do you seriously think that? I don't care how dumb you think Lois is. She would probably take about two minutes and think about that and go, wait a second, what's going on? Clark, you could, you could save those people. And he's like, no, I just want to be happy with you. She'd be like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> you go out there right now, Clark. And you save that mother and child. Now, it's instant. Or I'm going to make your life a living hell in every way possible way. <laughs> it's like, okay. And then and then he dumps he, he dumps her, her him later. She dumps him later because he's a moron and had to like think this way in the first place. That's insane to have a a big dumb moron who can crush you. Like, that's, that's dangerous. Holy crap. Vladimir, you're just, you're just quoting the movie. Here we go. Remember when Superman told the preacher that despite living on Earth 99.99% .99 of his life, he doesn't know if he should give humans a chance? <laughs> yeah. Growing up, going through school, high school. They, they just skipped high school in the Man of Steel films. It's like, what happened there? I don't know. There was some girlfriends or boyfriends or relationships. No, complete nothing. He had no bond to any part of humanity. He read Plato, he worked on an oil rig, and he destroyed a trucker's truck. That's all that happened to him. <laughs> oh, my God. Little angry, petty Superman. Yeah, it's pathetic. Instead, he takes up the spear and sacrifices himself for a world that hates him. So why did Snyder decide... Does the world hate him? There are some, some that, of them do. Some do, but not the some world. Some love him. Lo some love the guy. Some ask him to be saved. They need him to be saved. I... I okay, I, I really... I honestly don't think he had the weight of the world... On his conscience. I really don't. That not once do you say, oh, I, what am I going to do with all these people? How am I going to help them? Blah, 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 blah. That was never a concern of his. At least tell us what was going through his mind at certain times. That would be nice. But because we don't know how, we don't know his moral compass. If, if it was, if it was uh, Superman the movie, the original, he's, he's saving cats from trees. The first scene. It's like, oh, he does care about the little guy. So he would care about the the larger picture too. And this one, it's like, oh, it's so complicated. I don't know. I had to do this to these characters. Why make Batman a misguided villain blinded by rage? Why make Superman insecure and unsure of himself and his own existence? Why make these characters so flawed? So much to the point that most of the people who watch the movie hate them. During a panel, Zack Snyder addressed this and perhaps got a little carried away. And then you come and say to me something about like, oh, my superhero wouldn't do that. I'm like, are you serious? And it's a cool point of view. Look. Yes, I'm serious. I'm 100% fine with it. There, it's a cool point of view to be like, my heroes are still innocent, you know? Yeah, my but you're stupid. My heroes didn't fucking... I have the smart iteration of these heroes. Well, I would argue that Clark in Man of Steel and, and even in... Batman v Superman, I wouldn't say he's innocent. He's just really ignorant and naive. Like they're they're not in, like they're not smart. Like he doesn't get stuff. He doesn't realize how to deal with with Lex or Batman or Lois or the American government or like he's just duh. What happens next? I don't know. Stuff happens around him. Oh, now people hate me. Like okay, yeah. He has no he has no plan to fix that. 
like that doesn't do interviews like we saw in the first Superman film. He interviews with Lois Lane, like nothing. He's just a mystery guy that swoops in and does stuff and blows up buildings. It's like, thanks, great image. You know, lie to America. My heroes didn't, you know, embezzle money from their corp. My heroes didn't fucking. What is he talking about? This is not like, what? dude, Superman, good guy, go. Commit any atrocities. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, because they're heroes. But you're living in a fucking dream world, okay? Yeah, it's called comic oh, all, books. Yeah, all your bots is clap. Oh, yeah, heroes are dumb and evil. Yeah. Heroes are evil. Thank you very much. Comic books. Oh, what, a, what a brilliant point of view, Zack Snyder. Heroes comic, are evil. Fantastic. Yeah, the, the whole idea of a comic book is a fantasy. It's this magical world where people can fly, uh, you have impenetrable skin, and you can do amazing things. That is a dream. That is a crazy, crazy dream. And we go there to have a great time. We do not go to this crazy world where you have bulletproof skin and you could fly to contemplate whether or not, should I fly? Or should I save those guys with my amazing fast reflexes? Should I stop bullets? No, 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 no. It's fun to do all these things and you get to save people's lives. That's, that's as easy as it gets. It looks cool, it's fun to do, and you're a hero. Why wouldn't you want to do that? The bonuses are just, everything's great. You're impenetrable, you're super powerful, everyone's gonna love you after the fact. You would be doing that like you're on a, an endorphin trip. You'd be going crazy, just righting wrongs and just saving people from everywhere. It would, it would be amazing. It's a dream world. In fact, some of us dream of that, of doing amazing things, being Superman or flying around or stopping bullets or freezing time or whatever. And if you want to make that more down to earth, great. But guess what? You're pulling a comic book character into reality. The two biggest names, in fact. And you're not bringing the rest of them with them. You're not bringing the rest of their brains with them. The reality that is what it means to be Batman. And I don't mind Batman being brooding and dark and, and fallen and all that stuff. That's fine, yeah. I don't mind that. Just have it make sense. Tell us how it happened. Goes with the brim of fallenness. Yeah. How did we get from A to B? That's all we got to do. And then I'll go like, all right, this is your this is your interpretation. It's not my interpretation, but it's yours. I'll I'll go with that and see how it works because I can I can suspend my disbelief and say, all right, here's a dark version of the, there's lots of dark versions of Batman, so I I can do that. You're just not. No, Zack Snyder's the only guy. He's the only guy who ever did it. But he invented the dark version of Batman. All he has to do is hire a story writer to do that because his stories suck. Really, really badly. Yeah, Batman kills. All right, how do you, how do you come to that conclusion? I don't know. It'd be cool. That's how. <laughs> ah. So. While he obviously isn't the most Wouldn't eloquent point? speaker, okay. I believe that his point still stands. It is what sort point? of idealistic to believe that our personal heroes are flawless. What? Superheroes being idealistic and optimistic? Whoa, don't say. Oh. It's, it's as if it's almost as if uh, that the idealistic and optimistic portion of superheroes was one of the founding elements of it. The characters who can do what people can't, but who can do the impossible. That's yeah. why they're superheroes heroes. not just regular heroes it's, it's in the the name <laughs> they're not yeah, super bad super. guys <laughs> super <laughs> hero that the pulp heroes have to do they have to do nitty gritty stuff there's the regular pulp heroes they have to maintain the idea of realism superheroes though they're superheroes not just because they have powers but because they can do things that would otherwise be uh impossible or uh, unfeasible they could go and they can stop the bad guy. They could say they could save the the hostage from from being killed by the villain. They can they can stop the abuse of a father. They can do all this stuff. They can do all these things that we wish someone could step in to to quell or to stop, but don't or can't. But they can. They, that's the power of superheroes. They have the optimism there. They have that uh, innocence, like not really innocence, but more like the the positivity. That's there as a founding element of superheroes. No matter how brutal they get, no matter how dark they get, even with Batman, there's still that optimism there where, they, where at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, 
something good can happen. Maybe not everything works out well in those darker stories, but usually something great happens. And this usually comes from a guy who's not, it's not dark because the hero is dark. It's not dark because the hero is compromised or morally ambiguous. It's dark because the villains are dark. It's dark because these righteous heroes encountered these horrible situations. Yeah. You can't have Superman flying around with heat vision being impenetrable by bullets and not give him any conflict because, or else it's just a story of him flying around writing wrongs by two bit thugs and that's it movie over like you have to challenge him somehow so you got to get under his skin you got to find his weakness whether it's kryptonite or lois lane or whatever it's like yeah you gotta you gotta challenge him if you don't challenge your superhero there's no reason for him to be a superhero he's just a normal guy with extraordinary abilities uh beating up criminals that's not why we have them there's more there's more to the stage and the in the narration than just beat up some bullies and save some cats. Individual never make mistakes, who never deviate from their principles, who fail to do the one thing that they're designed to do. As part of the being a hero, though, having principles and then maintaining them even in the face of Armageddon. As people like Rorschach, he, he has principles of truth and he maintains that even in the face of Armageddon. That's what, what's so admirable about Superman and Batman is that they don't, they, they come close sometimes. They don't, they're not supposed to break these things. If they do, then they, they, they feel so bad about it that they have to go on a journey to redeem themselves. Yeah, uh, we talk about the, the Red Hood arc, uh, that one scene that was also animated where he explains things about killing. It's like, yeah, that's, that's why he doesn't kill because he knows the consequences of if he does do that, he won't stop. However, the most important part about all of this is that they change. They fix themselves. The first thing we see Batman doing is branding a low-life criminal, sentencing him to death. The very last thing we see Batman do is choose not to kill the man who probably deserves Batman's wrath the most. Clark, despite being uncertain about who he is and how he's supposed to live his life throughout the entire film, knows 100%. Uh, you could also argue that uh, they needed Lex for other films. So, I mean, at that point, the narrative is so dumb. It's like, oh, they didn't kill Lex. Fantastic. Gee, I wonder why. Oh, yeah, he's a major villain. Duh, 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 duh. Gee, that could be it too. Like all this other nonsense to justify Batman's behaving differently. <laughs> maybe he just <laughs> wanted to. Maybe he just wanted to scare Lex. He's that good. He's that crazy. This, I mean. <laughs> They could milk this franchise. Yeah, they better not kill the villain. Okay. That he loves his connection to humanity and thus chooses to sacrifice his life for them. That's a hero. By challenging the fundamental principles of these characters. That would make sense if we got the Superman that we wanted to have. The noble Superman who takes it upon himself to save people because he's compassionate and loves everyone around him. The, the Superman who takes it on the jaw and and uh, who believes in Santa Claus. That Superman, that one would be the Superman you're talking about. But not Zack Snyder's Superman who's just all brooding and just barely likes Earth. He, he only defends Earth because Lois is there or yeah. his mom is there. Why does... Is it really... He, he just goes to the motions of being a hero because his parents want him to, not because he wants to. Why does uh, Clark dislike the Batman? I'm trying to remember what's the problem. Because he blames him for the destruction of... I think Metropolis what, during no, the whole Zod fight. Why, no, no. Why does Superman hate the Batman? Why does Clark? Because Batman terrifies people and kills bad guys, I think. Okay. So he doesn't kill Batman because there wouldn't be a movie. And he says, if I wanted you dead, I would have done it by now. <laughs> it's like. So the next time we meet, you're going to kill me? <laughs> and he almost kills Lex, too. He's like, a, if he would have killed Lex if Lex hadn't taken his mother prisoner. Yeah. It's all this, it's this stuff where when you're a giant, you would not get angry at ants. Like, that's the kind of mentality Superman should have. And he doesn't. He sees Lex as something, you know, greater than he is or whatever. Why else would he get angry? It's like, oh, you have my mom. Okay, let's figure this out. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stall for time while I use my amazing sense of hearing to filter through thousands upon thousands of sounds and hear my mom talking like miles away or whatever. Like all, there's all these things that could that he could have done, but no, no, he's he's got to get angry and be submissive to Lex and then go and then go go talk to Batman. That's the whole. That's the entire and, setup for the fight. It's the dumbest and, shit. And then Batman punches him. He's like, "Wait, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, Bruce. Uh, I want to talk." And then punch, Batman punches him again. He's like, "Okay, that's it." And then they start to fight. Yeah, he just. <laughs> it, it's like an ant tapping you on the shoulder. It's like, or it's like, "What do you want, little ant? Oh, you, you want to fight me? Okay, well, let's not do that again. I want to talk to you." And he taps him again. Fine. He throws you across the room. <laughs> it's like, come on, Clark, use your brain. All right, he doesn't have one. That's right. Think, Clark, think. E- yeah, yeah, that's a great meme. Oh. All right, we got two minutes left. Characters. Snyder emphasizes why they are so damn important. Why Batman not killing is fundamental to his very... Snyder sucks at everything he tried to do. Except make the movie look good. All the things that Snyder tried to do in this movie was awful. It was just terribly done. It was amateurishly done. And it sucks. He did it a horrible way, and he kind of ruined everything he tried to do. So no, it is, it's all wrong. Yeah. It's all wrong. Since why Superman being a beacon of hope is so necessary for the character, and so Im- wait a second, what do you say about Batman? Elves. He's bacon. The first thing to do is choose most. Clark, despite being uncertain about humanity, and thus chooses to sacrifice his life for them. That's a hero. By challenging the fundamental principles of these characters, Snyder emphasizes why they are so damn important. Why Batman not killing is fundamental to his very existence. So you're trying to tell me that because Batman doesn't kill Lex, now he's no longer killing people, and therefore that's why Batman's not no-kill rule is important? Because his person he was about to kill had the same ma- name as his mommy's mother's name did what wait, is it, yes this is the lesson you're getting from the movie yes okay <laughs> i wow what a, what a stretch uh, dude like <laughs> you got all that from that scene like really okay why Superman being a beacon of hope is so necessary for the character. And why? Tell us why. It's so important for the, why? the rest of the world. Why? Just t- explain it. I, I don't like these open-ended generalized... I just, dude... A story should not be this, uh, a superhero story should not be this uh, generalized. It should be very specific what things mean. And you should point out to why, where that meaning can be looked at in a scene. Here's the scene where the the revelation is made, the climax is achieved, the character makes a choice, yada, yada, yada. It should be very clear. But you can't do that. Because you fight a giant turtle monster at the end. Because you can't end the film any other way because it's been a bunch of <laughs> bullshit till that point. You got to have a giant fight scene. That, to me, proves there was not much thought put into this film for, for symbolism and meaning if you're just going to fight a giant turtle monster that comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Almost literally. Just, they make, he makes it out of nothing. This is Zod's body and then a little bit of his blood. Yeah, it's... That just makes Doomsday somehow. It's essentially a deus ex machina and it wasn't developed at all. It's just like, oh, I'm going to use the spaceship and the thing and the stuff and I'm going to make a big Zod body creature and that's going to kill Superman for... So- like, why? How? And now that's that's the thrust of the story? It's It, it has nothing to do with everything else. That never came up. It was supposed to be a fight between Batman and Superman, and that's it. Not all this other crap. Very strange how this works out. He's like, oh, yeah. 
Lots of meaning. Maybe I have spent too much time thinking about this. Maybe I've spent way too many hours talking, discussing, and arguing about fictional characters in a fictional world, and whether or not a superhero movie that came out five years ago is a good one or not. Maybe there's no point to any of it. Maybe. But maybe not. Why do I care so much about this? About the clicks. Voicing my opinion on this. Does it go beyond wanting to defend a director's vision, justifying my own opinions on filmmaking as I delve further into filmmaking myself? or wanting to give some love to something that I believe is well made. I spent a lot of time reading negative comments on my last video essay, and I didn't really want to do another one because of it. I want to keep making my own films, Probably because, writing uh, my own screenplays, and hopefully making a small impact on the world in the process. I decided to make this essay partly because I wanted to elaborate a bit more on these films, but also because I want other people to see what I see, to love what I love. I so you want friends? Okay, I mean, fine. We're a social animal, but that doesn't justify making an essay for the sake of an argument. It's like, I did this because I want you to think like me. You're like, what? <laughs> really? When I, <laughs> when, I, when I write books on uh, storytelling, I don't want you to think like me, but if you want to write and you think I have good ideas, hey, I have a book for that on how to express yourself. I dismiss his hypotheses. Yeah, this is a, this is a strange take. It's like, I want to, I want it to have meaning. I want like, like, what, what do you mean? What, just make it and take a step back and let the world do whatever it wants with it. That's all you got to do. I want it to have meaning too. It just didn't. It's so biased, dude. Like, all you got to do is sit down with one of the, your detractors and hear his words, and and just try to understand where he's coming from. Once you do that, you're like, oh, okay, I see the logic of where you're coming from. Even this guy has logic. He's using it with a flawed premise, but he still has logic. So I can I can trace that logic and go, okay, here's your problem. This is this is the problem you have. Even though you don't think it's a problem, I'll explain to you why your bias is getting in the way of your thinking. Because once you do that, you you can show them their, their faults. You can show someone's problem with their, their built up argument. And if they still don't see it, I mean, there's not much more you can do once you explain and show a bias. Because we all have biases. It's nothing new. We all like and dislike things. And that's a bias. That distorts reality. Now, what we try to do with objective criticism, this is why I'm writing this bloody book now, it's so taking so long, is when we say we like something, we enjoy something, this is after we've gone through this rigmarole of, cr of critique, of what it means and how it means and why it's good. And yes, there are some sensationalistic aspects of storytelling and movies and books that go, okay, this is uh, this is the sex scene, this is the love making scene, this is the explosion scene. You know, it's like, ooh, that's cool. But we then say, wait a second, what does this mean? What's the value behind it? If it's just if it's just sensationalistic, then it's go, well, it's pretty surface level. It doesn't really mean much. Unless of course the whole film or the whole story is an action packed extravaganza. Then that's the point. So you you your your reference for genre has to be understood. You can't just you can't just go into this film going, I know nothing about Batman and Superman and and superhero movies, because we we have that we've had Marvel we've had Superman and Batman films for decades, and you're you're sure you're damn sure we're going to use that as a reference. It has themes, Mud Boy. It <laughs> has the best themes. All the best themes, believe me. All the best themes. All the experts say so as all the best teams. It's great. <laughs> well, hey, man, why, why are you going to be like that? <laughs> Come on, man. I, I want to make my own movie about Superman. He's he's he's, confu like he's confused like me, man. I, 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 I can wake up in the morning. Sometimes I, I put my, my pants on with the right leg first. or maybe Hairy legs? Maybe my hairy like, legs? My, yeah, my, I got them. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember if the left leg or the, right, the, the hairier leg is on the right. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's both at the same time, and then I'm really confused. But that doesn't make a difference. What matters, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Every American is entitled to... <laughs> Sup Superman is is a symbol a about Americanism. And once you know the symbol, you can be American. And you can you can kill or not kill 
hopefully not kill school bus full of kids. Superman, who who is Superman? Is he, is he, does he have my salad? Super salad man? Is that what he is? I mean, he's my waiter? I think his name was Clark. Yeah. Uh, hey, Joe, what was that guy's name last night? <laughs> he was a nice, nice guy. Give him my salad. Anyway. I got we we were told for four years that Trump is the 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 the, la the laughing stock of the world, but we we actually seeing that Biden is a laughing stock of the world <laughs> in videotape. Uh, it's been downplayed, obviously, on the American uh, TV shows and, and news channels. But I, I haven't watched it because it's, I don't care. But it's just I, I get clips on on Twitter. It's like, are you serious? He said like he he rambled for eight minutes. Are you serious? Yes, yes, he does all the time. I, it was obvious right before he got elected. Like but with, elected him anyway. With Trump, supposedly. he just writes obscure, ridiculous tweets. This guy thinks and speaks the craziest rambling nonsense. I'm like, I can't believe. I'm actually looking at Justin Trudeau and going, you know, at least I can understand what the hell you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if Justin Trudeau has hairy legs or not. So that's pretty good. <laughs> I, I don't want to know. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Dolomaticus. Demel hey, how's it going? The only thing I need to know about Snyder was this. He could see Batman getting graped in jail. The man is pretentious and overblown. Okay. Let's not go there. Uh, Vladimir again. <laughs> you couldn't even get Lex his mech suit? Did you have to bring out Doomsday? Yeah, well, honestly, if they brought out a mech suit, I'd be like even more confused because like, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> at I least, don't see this looks having a mech suit. Yeah, no. At, at least with uh, Doomsday, you had like the magical spaceship with goo and a bunch of other MacGuffins that did magical things. It's like, all right, fine. But it just came out so quickly. Like, there's no build up to it. It was like, uh, monster time. Like, all right. So, I don't know. It, it could have been a lot. It could have been a lot worse. That's true. All right, we got a minute. Minute left. I want that community to say, I totally agree. Well done. But I also really enjoy the rare comments that said, hey, I don't agree with you on this, but it's cool that you think this, and I'd be down to talk about it with you sometime. Maybe I'm rambling now. It's cool to connect with people, regardless of whether we agree or not. I'm sure that I will inevitably irritate right, some people, yaddy, 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 especially yaddy. with the... I don't care. Blah, blah, <laughs> blah. That was two minutes of him going, oh yeah... I made this because I want friends and I want to talk to friends. Even there are tons of people out there, there are tons of Snyder people out there who just love everything he does unquestionably. It's bizarre. I would just go talk to them. I would watch this film with him and pause every, you know, 20 seconds going, this is why this scene sucks. Let me explain it to you. There's some of them out there that go that they'll, they'll, if Snyder if that have made raccoons assholes sauteed on a stick, they still love it. And some of them are like is exactly like no matter what it is, they just love what he does. Okay, well, three hours and twenty minutes, not bad. Uh, we rambled a bit there, had a had a little bit of fun because it was getting boring near the end. But holy crap, man, what a fanboy! Whew. So, guys, read The Dark Knight Returns. It's a great comic. One of the best Batman comics out there. What and, a real Batman versus Superman. Read The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, see see if he actually kills anyone. Yeah, it's not hard to find. You know, Look for bullet Spoilers. holes. Spoilers, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't kill anyone in the, in the, whole, the whole book. Even though he's, he's uh, what, what do you say, senile and and uh, confused? I don't know. He's like Delusional. Delu like delusional, really? Batman's delusional, really? Okay. I don't know. Don't think so. Not in that comic. No, he's pretty freaking hardcore. He's He knows what he's doing. So, all right, let's read one more super chat and get out of here. Hey, Vladimir, thank you. Uh, I consider the mech suit better because this way, too early to do the death of Superman, that's something you do on the fifth movie or something. Uh, it, it would work with the with the... The kryptonite, I guess, but it, you'd have to build up to it. You can't just have him become Iron Man. You'd have well, to. To be like, fair, they had, they had to build up to Doomsday, but they did. They still didn't. No, <laughs> like if if you wanted the 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 subplot or the side plot to be Lex assembling like technology and figuring stuff out because he's a genius and he could do that, and uh, building a like a tent like a uh, an anti Superman suit or something like that. Like how would I stop him? How would I control him? He's like, why don't I make a suit? Like all this stuff. 
As a person, Honey, where's my anti Superman suit? Why do you need to know? I need Battle <laughs> Superman. <laughs> like something, <laughs> something to protect him. Because all he was doing was just prancing around. Uh, I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a, uh, uh, a um, same old Jackson Lex Luthor. That'd be kind of fun. Oh really? No, well, there's there's lots of other villains that they could have used, but man, that acting was just over the top. Uh, anyway, oh Alex Halo, thank you, Alex. Of course, he doesn't kill Batman. Batman isn't Kiritsugu. Okay, yes, it's a fate reference again. Thank you, Alex. Yes, uh, Kiritsugu kills mages. We get it. Okay. <laughs> ah, all right. I think we can call it a night. I gotta get a drink. This has been really silly. But yes, Very silly. I would reach out to this guy if I cared to. If he wants to talk to us, that'd be great. Um, we'd be happy to uh, to have a talk. But uh, I'm not leaving a comment on his video like I usually do. This is a fanboy, and uh, very similar to the Gold Man. You know, it, does, it doesn't lead anywhere. We're not going to change his mind. It doesn't make a difference. So, so thank you guys for listening. Thanks, Lit Dev, for suggesting this. This was kind of cool. Uh, been a while since we did Snyder. Oh yeah. And uh, we've mostly been doing uh, SJW isms for the past few months. So this was a nice touch. And we're going back to regular scheduled Smudcast voting democ- democratic stuff on the Discord. St- oh, shit. We have memes. Oh, God. I love God. democracy. God damn it. Memes. <laughs> I wanted a drink. But now it's meme time. I can only imagine how many guys, many you guys made. All right. Here we go. Stream memes. All right. Uh, this is before six o'clock. Batman goes brrrr <laughs> <laughs> in the bat jet. He's just shooting up cars, killing people. Here's Snyder on Batman killing. I believe you. I took that little yes. vignette from a scene in this Dark Knight Returns. Yes. At the end of that, he shoots the guy right between the eyes with the machine gun in a one, one shot. Back off or I'll kill him. Believe me, man, I'll do it. Nope. And, uh, <laughs> of course, I went to the gas tank, and all of my guys that I work with were like, got to shoot him in the head, you know, because they're all comic book dorks. And I was like, I'm not going to be that guy who does that. <laughs> uh, he was referring to that, that one frame of the comic book where it's the shoulder, but there's no bullet hole, so we don't know exactly what happened. And in the animated version of as we just saw of the comic or the animation brother it's the they, they shoots the gun out of the person's hand so ah <sighs> oh flashpoint paradox yay there he is thomas wayne that batman kills people yes that's true is dueling or dual wielding pistols so and that where he's like thomas wayne yes trying to avenge the death of bruce and his, his son the no, of his... His, yeah his son his son because his wife was the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy stuff. This is uh, Eric Taco Wright. Eric. Uh, I was fighting a Cape Badass, but then we discovered that his mom is named Martha too. <laughs> Deadpool 2, yeah. Did, uh, did he parody that? I know I saw Deadpool 2. I can't remember all the jokes though. Uh, You mother. Wh- wait, what did you say? Martha? Your mother's name is Martha? My mother's name is Martha. That oh my, <laughs> phew boy! I gotta I gotta catch my breath for a second. This is, I mean, it, this changes everything, you know. <laughs> are you are you doing a bit? Or are you serious? And do you even know? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Talks about Jurassic Park. Scene not in Jurassic Park. Oh. Your mother, your mother's name is Martha too. Onichen, <laughs> you're my brother. <laughs> uh, Mateus uh, is a good scene. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, the Dark Knight Redemption. Is that an actual comic book? I don't know. 
Uh, probably not. Uh, corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Uh, they're the same picture. <laughs> same picture. <laughs> Superman and Batman. Oh, God. What's your mother's name? Martha, Martha, Hippolyta. <laughs> she <laughs> throws Wonder Woman out the window. <laughs> oh. Uh, Mateus, uh, marking, you are watching movies wrong in the bingo card. Yeah. You need a big brain to understand Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, there's Telosians from Star Trek. You need to look deeper to appreciate the story. Me. glasses. <laughs> so many lenses. It's always about themes. Well, I, I nothing against people defining themes and expre- explaining them. What he did was that's all he did. And the categorization was like you're making three boxes all the same type. And you're like, <laughs> why? <laughs> what's the point? Oh, no, Zack Snyder, and he's wiping his ass with Superman toilet paper or Spider... It's Superman toilet paper, okay. Jeez. Gorgeous Rex, why didn't the Batman cross the road? Because it couldn't cross the line. Okay. Uh, Bane, yes, Prime Studio One. The Dark Knight Rises. All right. The Dark Knight Rises. Yes. This is how you say yes. <laughs> uh, great Scott Superman. Uh, will you please listen? I'm not the Messiah. Zack Snyder, he is the Messiah. Oh, that's a great, that's a great meme. Fantastic stuff. Bravo. Great Scott. I like that one. Uh, what, what do you call it when Batman skips church? Christian Bale. <laughs> Christian uh-huh. Bale. Very nice. I like it. Uh, Zack Snyder, uh, you have failed the DC franchise. And this is the uh, Arrowverse, I think. Or is that... I can't tell if that's the Arrowverse Arrow or if that's the Smallville Arrow. They look very similar. Peter... Oh, sorry. Uh, Paul Verhoeven's Robocop, Zack Snyder's Robocop. Oh. Just a lake of fire and Jesus Christ in the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so emotional. Their mothers share the same name. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. What is that name? It's it's just it's so it's so dramatic, man. It's just hey hey man, we we got the same mom's <laughs> name. Is, isn't that make us brothers or something? You're my you're my brother. Uh, sure, sure, Mister Brighton. That makes us brothers. Now give us, give me all your money. We're brothers from a from a different mother or something. Yeah. Zack Snyder, architect, themes, character, story is leading to our piece of stories at the bottom. <laughs> Actually, he would if it was according to that guy, uh, he would have swapped characters and story for some reason. I don't know. He's he's an interesting guy. I would I would just talk to him about how he characterizes or categorize stuff because I'm so lost if Superman didn't say Martha uh, Mr. Terrific oh that's great he'd have Superman's uh, <laughs> outfit up on his glass box instead of uh, Robin's uh, Zack Snyder confirms Brian Cranston was up for Lex Luthor and Batman v Superman oh my god thank god he didn't take it we were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Honestly, no. I'm glad he didn't do it. I really, <laughs> I really don't think anyone should be affiliated with that film, especially Cranston. That would that would have been sad. Maybe when your mother's finished mourning your father, I'll keep her in black on your behalf. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Mother. I failed you. Forgive me, Martha. Did he say what I think he said? We have to help him. <laughs> it's dark, dark side. <laughs> so I think it's dark side. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I understood that reference. Yeah, that's Eric. Frank Miller's Batman. Come on, man. 
<laughs> hey. Fake come, me this. Come on, man. Come on, man. I, I, I'm Batman. Yeah. I, I got I got the, the got hairy legs. Got got the helmet. Got hairy legs. Don't have a hairy face, but I got hairy legs. That's pretty close. When Batman was a one night stand and a random woman named Martha. Oh my god. Martha, say my name while you finish, Batman. Why did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> you see to keep up appearances eventually uh, Bruce has to go hang out with chicks and he just pays them off so he hires a bunch of prostitutes <laughs> that's how that works out why Batman didn't finish the Joker Batman has a line that he will not cross and it's a line of clowns a Ronald McDonald crown <laughs> what the hell Boy. Get a load Wait, of Batman's fear is now clowns, I guess, instead of bats. Here we got uh Chandler from Friends and he's dressed up as the Joker. Get a load of this society. Okay. I believe these are your things. And it's the Joker. Sorry, the the not the Joker, the the Riddler handing. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's the um, who's the actor that played uh, Lex in Batman v Superman? He would have been a better Riddler than probably, than, than maybe, Lex. maybe. It would 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 have been anything than Lex Luthor. Yeah, Lex Luthor is not that crazy, or not crazy. Period. Okay. How common is the name Martha? Records indicate 550,000 girls in the United States have been named Martha since 1880. The greatest number of people were given this name in 1947 when 10,647 people in the U.S. were given the name Martha. Those people are now 73 years old. Oh, wow. Good, Good job there, Batman. Oh, boy. Putin not accepting the uh, Jolly Rancher. Uh, When DC goes from making movies like The Dark Knight Rises to movies like Batman v Superman in just four years, what happened? Your balls drop off? Hmm? (laughs) What happened? Your balls drop off? (laughs) All right. Uh, For some reason, I somehow felt responsible for these two. Oh. And that's the Justice Lord Batman or Superman holding up uh, Homelander. And I don't, I don't know the other guy. Who's that? Couldn't tell you. I think maybe Mark. Invincible? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen it to know who that could be. Uh, did I move the laundry to the dryer? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I have no idea who that is. Yeah. He's in more of this stuff. So here, here's the bomb scene in the Senate or the hearing. Yeah, what's what's going on in Superman's mind? I don't know. Just stand around. Uh, so, and so I frame Superman for killing those terrorists by having henchmen shoot them with actual bullets and flamethrow and flamethrow the bodies two minutes away from the CIA, just as Superman would. Yeah, not not the greatest plan. Why would Superman nuke or blow up or set, use a bomb? to blow up his own Senate hearing. Doesn't quite make sense. What would, what does Superman need with a starship? Yeah. Some people watch movies. Other people daydream while a movie plays nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Cav hears ridiculous on the smud cast, <laughs> he did say ridiculous at the start when he was critiquing that those other guys... I didn't bring it up, though, because that's, that's silly. But I know some people in this podcast thought, oh, they said the word. Uh, here is... Uh, okay, the first one is Doomsday in the movie. And the second one is... I think, the not the Balrog, but the the Giants in Lord of the Rings, I think. Don't know their names. Batman, they have a cave troll. They have a cave troll. <laughs> it looks like, exactly like the cave troll from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. 
Still a better monster than Doomsday and Batman v Superman. I don't know what that is. Some snowy, spiky guy. Zack Snyder's BS and <laughs> whoever that is just ducking under it, yeah. Focusing on the movies you have lined up while trying to improve by learning from past mistakes, Warner Brothers going, yeah. Announcing many new movies and not learning from mistakes, Warner Brothers screaming. Announcing unnecessary movies every few months and sabotaging your films. And Warner Brothers is just, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's being possessed. Uh, from my point of view, the heroes are evil. <laughs> Visible confusion. <laughs> what? Zack Snyder finally explains the weirdest scene in Batman v Superman uh, when you have to warn Batman against killing people. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, stop killing people, Batman. Yeah. Uh, logic, Zack Snyder, and then we have a good BVS movie. Oh. Your mom's name is Martha. My mom's name is Martha. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Isn't that great? My mother's name now is... Now I'm going to best of friends. <laughs> Here is this... Uh... Is that the guy from... Scarlett Johansson movie? Uh... Black Widow? I can't remember his name. David Copeland or something like that? My mother's name is Martha... It won't work, buddy. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanos doesn't care. Is your mom's name also Martha? And then Iron Man says no. Civil War, Captain America. <laughs> Martha. Who the hell is Martha? It was worth a shot. Oh, okay. Oh, that's Captain America. Okay. I Yeah. Guys, <laughs> I haven't seen this that's film. Him, yeah. yeah, I have no idea. No, his name is Martha. It didn't work, buddy. Martha, Martha. Why is why is Martha? Why is Martha? That's great. <laughs> Drax. <laughs> Save Martha in Batman v Superman. Um, is it supposed to be stupid? It's not stupid. It's deep, and you just didn't get it. Oh, thanks, thanks, Zach. It's over, Darkseed. All your boom tubes are closed. But if they are closed, how will I see my mom, Martha? Batman goes, oh, my God. What? Oh, damn it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. I killed a person whose name is Martha. There's a mama whose name is Martha. Oh, no. <laughs> this is supposed to be stupid. <laughs> Society. Why did you say that thing? And we got... We have... Uh, Two versions of the Joker? I don't know. Something. Something's going on there. This is a fake character named Martha. There is a fake character named Martha. Really? And it's uh, a witch chick. And it's Batman. He goes, Martha. And we've got some orange-haired chick in the background going, what the hell? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. That joke is, as much as I know fate, that I'm like, what the hell is going on there? All right. No, Alex, no more fate. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're done. That was Alex Halo. All those memes were Alex Halo. Holy crap. Lots of Alex Halo. Okay. A lot of fate. Now I need a drink. My throat is getting sore. Oh, my God. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, uh, Lit Dev, for suggesting this. That was pretty cool. Yeah, no problem. Always nice to go through some crap takes and fuel my desire to keep writing my book. Because <laughs> holy crap. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I know. You, you got to, like, it comes to a point. There's just, it's so much crap, so much fanboyisms, so many biases. You just can't take it anymore. So, anyway. Thank you so much, guys. Keep these suggestions coming. We're going to look at the uh, the voting for yet today as well, for tomorrow. So don't worry about uh, uh, nagging the mods just yet. But thank you for everything and tuning in. Have yourself a great evening. Let's get a drink going. Have yourself.